the aim assist thing, we don't have any hardcore data on it. At the end of the day, it is just opinion based. Can have an opinion doesn't have to be so polarizing. Actually, the funny thing is, is I started playing first person shooter games on a PC. If you look at console sales over the last five years, they have consistently gone down year over year. So I was talking to like a few of my friends. My friends are all different backgrounds, different walks of life. And we're just talking one night and we're just amazed at how just divided the world is nowadays. People always make fun of like the old heads like us and they say uh, like oh, okay go back to call of duty lobbies all right bro and like you you guys don't understand we got shit on in those lobbies and it was either pick up your bootstraps and get better or you remain or you remain the shitter there was no other options do you remember when we used to have when we used to have to use guns to like see if they were good or not <laughs> you could just yeah. look up a video <laughs> Yeah, you you actually had to mess around with the attachments and yep. you had to play with it for a little while. You it took at least a solid week before you were able to make that final decision. Like, so there's some weirdos out there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> there 100 percent is. Yeah, and uh, yeah, especially some some of your content's very uh, forward. So <laughs> yeah, people don't like it, and people for don't whatever like reason. It. People do not like on honesty, especially about aim, aim assist. I, I gave up on that argument a long time ago. I, I I figured that's a losing battle. Yeah, it's one of those things where you can't really, you know, you can't you can't convince some somebody. So at the, at the end of the day, you're just kind of talking to into a black hole. <laughs> like I think I think the way the best way that I approach things is always with a uh, I I approach things in a realistic mindset like um I, I, the the word escapes me right now but I, I i don't try and give too much to myself and i don't try and like give too much to like the other side you know i try and keep it middle ground as much as possible so i i think people need to realize that before they start watching like you stick to facts essentially Right. It, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there's still opinions because, yeah. like, the aim assist thing, we don't have any hardcore data on it. So, really, at the end of the day, it is just opinion based. But I mean, you can have an opinion, and it doesn't have to be so, you know, polarizing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, how how long have you have, have you been playing on, on controller? Uh, I've been playing on controller, gee, since I was like five or six wow yeah that's a little longer than me i think i started when i was like probably a 10 or 11 probably like playstation 2 i think well so ever since i was growing up as a kid we always had some site like some sort of game console or something <clears throat> in our home whether it be like an atari or super nintendo something and i went to a daycare center that also had a Sega Genesis and a Super Nintendo. Yeah. So I was, I was always playing video games. <laughs> Actually, now now that you mention it, Nintendo sixty four. I think that was my first con. That was my first game console. I mean, I did play like the, you know, like the little Atari, like the big Atari machines, the old like pinball type of machines there. But yeah. Um, yeah, I think Nintendo 64. That was actually my sister's con con console. She like got we used to play like Mario Party and Mario Kart and stuff like that. So, yeah, actually it's probably before 10, but like the FPS era was like PlayStation 2, Call of Duty 3, I believe, and Call of Duty 2. So, yeah. It's been a while. But uh, yeah, I mean, I started recording prior to this, so I can add this in here if you want me to, or, or if you don't yeah. want me to. <laughs> no, it's fine. I I figure as soon as I press the camera on and my microphone's on, I'm assuming that you're recording. So okay. No, when, when we started talking about the aim assist thing, is when I started recording. So <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that was not the first question, but it's it's we can probably get more into that if you really want to. But at the end of the day, I mean, the the point I was trying to make was that coming from people that have played on controller for over 20 years, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. we, we know more than like the PC dude that's been playing on mouse and keyboard for 20 years. It's like, picks up a controller after like a month. And it's like, this shit's so overpowered. You're like, yeah, I mean, you play a lot, but I mean, yeah, of course it's going to feel great in the first 
month or so. You use use it for five years. I guarantee you, there's gonna be a lot of flaws. You're gonna find out. <laughs> This is the perfect time to take a moment to like and subscribe to this video and support your local YouTuber. Well, actually, the funny thing is, is I started like playing first person shooter games on a PC. So yeah, that, that's how I started out. I started playing Unreal Tournament and Quake when I first started out with an old track and ball mouse and a, like a old white mechanical keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's how I started playing first person shooters. And then my a bunch of my friends were getting uh, Halo 2. So mm -hmm. I was like the nerd. It, it, you were a nerd if you had a yeah. PC back then and you were playing video games on a mouse and keyboard. You were a nerd. Like that there's no question to it. Yep. Now it now it's like a cool thing. Like everyone <laughs> tries to flex on each other with like how fancy their PC is with all the lights on it and I'm just like, dude, yeah. that's just so weird. But uh I switched my from PC to console and I've started I played on console ever since then. So yeah. Wait, wait, what console are you playing on? Xbox, right? Yeah. So I switched to, I've owned PlayStation. So I've had PlayStation, I've had Nintendo. Uh, and then my main competitive platform was Xbox because um, Xbox back in the day, that was the competitive platform. Like if you wanted to have a chance at quote unquote going pro in a game, that was the platform to play on because mm. they they had all the... MLG, Halo 2, um, and that scene was really, really large. Like, a lot of people don't remember, but um, before there was Twitch, they broadcasted on USA Network the Halo 2 Finals, and it was like uh, Team Carbon and Final Boss, and it, it was it was amazing. Like, no one ever seen that before, like a, like a video games final. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah. Do you, do you have the X or, or the S? Uh, I have the X. Oh damn! <laughs> you know, I've been uh, I I've been debating whether I really want to get that or not because it's just like <sighs> it's like it it's the new one's gonna come out in what like three th three or four years. Yeah. So th when I was originally looking at the new consoles, um, because I had an original Xbox One, so it, mine was getting really sluggish. Uh, I was tossing back and forth between a PlayStation 5 and an Xbox. And the only reason that I wanted the PlayStation 5 was, one, the exclusives on it, and two, it seemed like it was becoming more of the competitive console platform as opposed to Xbox. Xbox has kind of really waned over the last few years. Mm. So um, the only reason that I went with Xbox this time around was because... Xbox is kind of moving away from consoles. They're really moving towards a more subscription-based service. So you can purchase a game on Xbox and you can play it on your phone. Or you, if you upgrade to PC, you can just open up the Xbox app, play it on your PC. So I eventually do want to make the switch back to PC. And then uh, that just it just seemed like a no-brainer to me. Because if I spend money, my stuff is going to be there. Mm. You don't you don't think that they're that's a good point but you you don't think that they're trying to do you think they're trying to convert their console a, a audience to like you know to PC is that is that what you think might be happening with this subscription service Uh yeah I mean that's the ultimate goal is to switch people over because I mean uh I know everyone th thinks I'm really boring with all my statistics and facts and charts and all that <laughs> jazz. But if you look at console sales over the last five years, they have consistently gone down year over year. Whereas PC sales, they've kind of plateaued and they're just, they're consistent. And there was a little bump during the pandemic, mm, yeah. as we all know. Yeah. But they have pretty much have remained consistent. So you're seeing you're starting to see a a decline in the number of consoles being purchased. So Microsoft knows that. They're they're not dumb. They have they've known that for the last 8 9 years. So what's the next big thing for them? Well, Microsoft mm -hmm. already has a chokehold on the PC market in terms of operating system. Like you can't turn on a PC without seeing Windows on it unless you're running like Apple or Linux. That's a good point. So what's the next best strategy for them? Make a subscription-based service for games. Charge people mm -hmm. monthly, and they can have whatever they want.
<laughs> you don't think that the pandemic with the, you know, now I'm at this point, it's like, who cares? But the chip shortage, you, you, you don't think that that was one of the major factors in that, in that analysis? Um, the chip shortage. Uh, <laughs> so I have my own personal opinions about like, the pandemic and everything like that. And yeah. if I get way too much into it, then we're just going to go on a tirade. So all I'll <laughs> say is, is that I think that a lot of stuff got overblown way out of proportion. And, um, I think a lot of quote unquote shortages were basically due to, uh, it, it was just by, by, uh, it, it was, uh, too many people were in demand and there wasn't enough supply because, people were trying to still figure out what was going on with the world. You mm. know what I mean? So the people were stuck at home. So they just purchased a lot and then little drips and drabbles were coming in, but not full blown production. And then it caused a so uh, shortage. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with hearing the, <laughs> the, the, uh, you know, the, um, the things that you wanted to get into, it's fine. I mean, we could do it here, or we could do it offline. I don't really care, but I'm always, I'm always interested to hear different perspectives on, you know, the pandemic and all that other stuff. Well, that's the, that's just, that's just the way that I grew up. So um, people find it very odd, but I surround myself with all different kinds of people. Um, I have people that are right leaning. I have people that are left leaning. I have trans friends. I have. Uh, yee yee cowboy friends like that's just the way that i grew up because that's how my family is like and when i was growing up my family was very like down the center you could move one way to the left and then you would have someone with a completely different opinion from yeah. someone that was just sitting to your right so in my family we always respected each other's opinions at the end of the day and that's just that, that's that's just how i grew up so this world that we're living in now is very weird to me. And I feel like I don't belong because I give my opinion sometimes and people get very, very angry mm. and they want, and they want to call you names and they want to block you. And it's like, dude, chill out. I said one sentence. So you're going <laughs> to let that one sentence define your whole existence. Like relax. It's funny that you mentioned that because, um, have you ever heard of average, uh, on TikTok, I I have not. I I was I, talking to him, and um, he is he's black, and it's funny because he's, he he always says that people like say all this racist stuff to him, and then um he says it's like so concentrated he feels like, and I told him because I made this I made this uh this analogy to somebody else too, um. They people went around. I, I don't remember the exact study, but people went went around asking pe people on on the streets like, how much of the how, what what percentage of the population do you think is like you know part of LGBTQ, gay, you know, black, whatever? And when they when they got to like the LGBTQ stuff, like people were like five percent, ten percent, twenty percent. But in reality, it was only like point zero five percent. It was like some small, like super insignificant no number. Mm -hmm. And then I pretty much said social media makes it seem like everything is so, you, you know, like um, in your face, like everything's so mag magnified because of social media. And like, that's also why he feels like every comment is like racist or whatever to, to him. But I'm like, you know, that's really what it is. Like it's, it's, it is a, it is magnified because of, uh, because of TikTok, because it's, because of Facebook, because of, you know, it's just all magnified because of that that scene um yep. so it's 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 funny that you say that it, it, it really is because i always try to surround myself with you know with people that are different opinions like even if me and you disagree with something like i'm not going to just attack you you know what i mean like i'm going to try yeah. to un understand your perspective but yes it's like if you i've gotten million view videos multi-million view, view videos and that is the same thing like it's just like everybody will attack you if you have an opinion. <laughs> yes. And it's it's wild actually. Like I was I was talking to like a few of my friends and um you know, it, my friends are all like different backgrounds, different um walks of life. And we're just like talking one night and we're just amazed at 
how just divided the world is nowadays. Yeah. Like, and it just seems like you, the one one of the underlying messages that everyone preaches is like we all need to come together and you know be together kumbaya, which is is a it's a great message. Yeah, but but hardly hardly anyone practices it. Yeah. Like you, you will see one group hate the other group one day and then it could be a completely different topic and then those that's those two same groups will suddenly love each other. It's yeah. it is the most <laughs> it is the most bizarre <laughs> stuff I have ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. And the other the the flip side of that coin, the good side I guess you could say is that, you know, sometimes the internet will come together against somebody that's doing harmful things. I've seen a couple of TikToks about that where, you know, like somebody's trying to, you know, um, scheme some somebody or whatever. And like the internet will come together and like, you know, gas, not gaslight, but, you know, put that person on under the spotlight and saying you're not doing something right. Um, so that's always interesting and always good to see. But both sides, you know, there's always good, there's always good, good sides and bad sides. So you get the magnification of people being shitty to you and then you also have the people that are <laughs> that are doing good things so i mean yeah. i guess it's a trade-off right yep okay we can <laughs> we can get into the actual interview now if you like <laughs> sure. but we can yeah, always I'm talk down. more on it i'm i'm good i'm I, I always love to hear the full 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 story and opinions but how did you come up with your name uh so my name uh, originally on Apex was Verbatim Turtle, and <laughs> it was a name that was generated by Google. And the reason oh, yeah. that I, uh, the reason that I kept the name, was because Google actually spelled verbatim wrong. So at the at the end of verbatim, it's T I M, but Google spelled it T U M, and I don't and I and I don't know why. So. For the longest time, I was verbatim turtle. <laughs> and one day, uh, while I was playing Apex, and um, we, me and my friend, we were really, really, really grinding ranked. Like, in, uh, we were complete crap in season two, which was the first season of rank. And then season three, we just, we played all the time. I probably had like four or five thousand games that season and um we were constantly playing rank and i actually was able to hit apex predator nice now i didn't know at the time in season three well i mean you you hear some things like some people doing it at the time right but i didn't realize the scale of it there was this glitch going around uh called um uh, I forgot the name of it, but it, it was basically a glitch where if you uh, dashboarding, that was it, dashboarding. Mm. So people would get knocked and they would open up their browser or hit F2 or they would back out of the game and they wouldn't lose any RP. Mm -hmm. On the flip side of that, if you knocked that person and they did that, you didn't gain anything either. <laughs> so when I was playing season three, I found it the most frustrating season because I'm knocking all these kids and I'm not getting any points for them. Yeah. And then I finally hit it in. It was like, cause the season was like a, like 115 or like 120 something around there days yeah. long. It was a really long season. Yeah. And uh, I hit it on like day 80 or something. Like I finally hit apex predator and I was in like the top, 8,000, which nowadays that would be considered masters. And I was, I was just so damn proud of myself. And then you started hearing towards the end of the season that your rank means absolutely nothing because of all these kids that were dashboarding. There was like over 150,000 predators. Like, and <laughs> the funny thing, the funny thing is, is respawn banned or took away the rewards for like, 90 percent of them yeah. like if those people that did that they logged in that day they got the rewards taken away mm -hmm. i didn't because 
Because you didn't do I that. Played, yeah. Because I played legit. <laughs> but it didn't it didn't matter at that point. Because if you wore that badge, if you had that trail, you got the stereotype and the stigma with it. And that just kind of brought me down a mm-hmm. lot. Anyway, so how I got my name <laughs> was after I hit Apex Predator, yeah. my friends said that I peaked. Mm. I've now hit my peak. Yeah. And my previous, I always like naming myself two words. Like, you'll notice that with all my names, verbatim, turtle, peaked, panda. Yeah. I was like naming myself with two words. So um, my name in League of Legends, because I, I played League of Legends, I was Diamond in League of Legends, I was support Blitzcrank. You know, that's kind of odd. I was a Blitzcrank main in League of Legends, and I'm a Pathfinder main in uh, uh, Apex Legends, so that's really weird. <laughs> but anyway, so I was Lit Panda in League of Legends. I was so edgy, by the way. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I changed my name to Peaked Panda because of that. Okay. Because I hit my my peak. And it was all downhill from there. And I was pissed <laughs> off at the game at the time, too. I didn't want to play ranked. I didn't, I didn't give a shit. And I'm like, everyone's telling me I'm crap now. <laughs> like, I don't want to do this anymore. Well, see, that's where I think... Um, well, it's about mindset, too. But that's where I think uh, a, a lot of the people that well, at least me and my friends, like me and my friend groups. I Small backstory, Call of Duty was my game. I, high school, me and my friends were ranked under 100 in the world. Like, And then everybody started modding, and then it went to like 1,000, and then it was like way high. So it was like Modern Warfare, uh, the first one, so Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 4, and then, Call, and then Modern Warfare 2, we were all ranked pretty much under 1,000 in that game at like all times. Um... And it's funny that you say that because a lot of people started to hack and whatever else. And you saw the gold cross, you know, you saw the high prestiges and people were, you know, like, oh, this guy probably sucks. He probably cheated and yada, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, you were able to show them with your skill how good you actually were. Then they then they would, you know, by the end of the game, they just didn't say, say anything, right? Because right. uh, we used to play a lot. Like, we used to play a lot. Like, I was, you know, weekends were... 6 7 a.m to 12 o'clock at night like we played all day and i never streamed i never did any videos or anything we just kind of played for 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 fun and uh now that i think about it how much time i I wasted doing that like i probably could have been (laughs) i could have probably had like millions of followers by the time i was like 20 but but anyway it's neither here nor there so um i think the main point of that was you earned it and I think that it w- it's just a matter of like, you 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 can show them how good you are versus you know them just being like, oh you suck you suck. But then by the end of the game, you got tw- you got you have like a fifteen or twenty bomb, and with like five thousand damage plus, and they they've only got two two or three kills. And then it's like, okay, well he's he definitely didn't cheat. You you, you, you know what I mean? Does that yeah. does that kind of make sense? <laughs> I know yeah. my rants, but. <laughs> No, no, I get what you're saying. Uh, it was just after that day, I, I really cut back a lot on Apex because yeah. uh, it was interfering with my uh, personal life. My wife was feeling like at the time she wasn't spending enough time with me. Yeah. And at that point, I was frustrated with the just the community at that point because I felt like I felt like I got cheated in some way. Yeah. Um. Uh, I never stopped wearing the badge. Like I always kept the pred badge on because yeah. I was I was so proud of that achievement because I, I'm not gonna let some Timmy tell me that I didn't earn it. Like yeah. did you watch me play? Yeah. Like you didn't watch <laughs> did me. Did you watch every game? I don't think so. <laughs> so, uh, so you cheated? I was like, No, I'm pretty sure I didn't. I've been averaging like a two, two and a half K D every season in apex so i mean i for a lot of people that's on the low end nowadays but back yeah. then in the early days of apex that was that was considered high yeah so i i mean i don't really care anymore <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know i i think a 2 kd is high i mean i i i usually have a low kd one because i just don't like hackers <laughs> 
I remember when I had a 3 KD and just every game was hackers. Apex, my first my first few games, I, I mean I wasn't like amazing, but I, I got a decent amount of kills. And then I also got, you know, little to no deaths. So my, my KD was like at one point, it was low. It was like well the kills was low and then the deaths were low. So it was like I think like a four point five or something. Obviously, it's way lower now. But <laughs> um, at the time, my, my one of my first I think twenty games, I got in with a hacker, in it, because my KD was so high. I, I forgot what the season it was. I think it was like ten. Not well. Not no. Yeah. Eh. No, we started playing. I think like five, fifth or sixth season, something like that. It was yeah, it, and my 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 first one my first twenty games, I got at least one hacker that that I knew about, like because I I spectated him after, and he was just ripping people. He was just, brr, brr, brr. I was like, yeah, okay, that's that's not that's not aim assist. <laughs> that, that's a that's a big problem in and of itself. I yeah. mean, I think it, I think the cheating has gotten worse over the years as long as I've been playing games. I think it's just gotten worse. Yeah. Uh, more sophisticated, more numerous in number, easier to get. It's getting easier. Yep. Def definitely easier. And, uh, I think the mentality of gamers nowadays is just very weak. Like, what? Like, I, you know, people always make fun of like the old heads, like us. <laughs> yeah. And they say, uh, <laughs> like, oh, okay, go back to Call of Duty lobbies. All right, bro. And, like, you you guys don't understand. <laughs> we got shit on in those lobbies, and it was either pick up your bootstraps and get better yeah. or you remain or you remain the shitter there was no yeah. other options mm -hmm. yep. and kids nowadays they they, uh, they fall prey <laughs> they don't they fall pr they fall prey to like the easy route they want to go the easy route out yeah so and that's why like controller settings videos and that's why um here here's how to do the recoil patterns that's why those videos pop off because People are always looking for the, the easy, easy route. shortcut. Yeah. yeah, the easy shortcut to just get better and get it done, and then call it a day. Do you remember when we used to have when we used to have to use guns to like see if they were good or not? <laughs> you could just yeah. look up a video. <laughs> yeah, you you actually had to mess around with the attachments, and yep. you had to play with it for a little while. You it took at least a solid week before you were able to make that final decision. Like. Yeah. Okay, well, I give this gun like a solid seven, or like, no, nah, this gun is ass, bro. Don't use this shit. <laughs> now it's like there's a meta video like every single week. <laughs> At yeah. least, all right, sorry, that's actually not as consistent. There's a there's a meta video every single day. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, mm, yeah. Um, what was the first game you ever played? E ever. Ever. Uh, jeez. Uh, that was uh when I had my PC. Uh, it was my dad's work computer, and I he bought me Mech Commander, which was an RTS game, and that was my first game that I played. And uh, there was also another one. Uh, you could probably look it on YouTube. It's probably somewhere on YouTube. It's called mm. like a, it's called like Death Race or something. I've and, heard of that. And we're talking like box <laughs> early '90s crappy <laughs> graphics, but it was a racing game, and you had rockets, and then each level got more and more difficult, and you would upgrade your car, and you would shoot the other players, and try and win the race at the same time. So that it was those two like fun. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of fun back then. It, that's similar to Test Drive Five, but like without the rockets. It's just like yeah. a racing game. I, I don't. I don't know if you've ever played that. It's close to Need for Speed. Test Drive Five was like all like cool like sports cars, you know, exotic cars, and you could like earn them by winning races and whatever else. It was more of a racing game than it was like a kill your other opponents or game. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what what's your favorite game of all time? Uh, Halo 2. Why? Halo 2 was just peak everything. That was the golden era for literally everything. Golden era for content. Golden era for competitive gaming. 
because it was new, it was exciting, it got played on television. Um, golden era for replayability, mm. you know, um, just online consistency. People were using their mics all the time in that game. It's like you couldn't go a game without hearing someone using a McDonald's <laughs> drive through mic and it was going off in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Want to turn off that fan, bro? <laughs> no, it's just my mic. <laughs> uh, I think just for me, I think everything after Halo 2 wise is just basically gone downhill. Maybe the quality's gotten better. Maybe the events have gotten bigger. Yeah. But in my opinion, I think it's just, it's suffered a lot yeah. in terms of the actual value of it. What M M sixteen to your head? What's uh? What's your what's your favorite overall of Halo Two? Like if you had to just choose off offhand, what's your favorite part? Unless you want to take some more time to think about it, but the M sixteen is at your head. <laughs> uh, my favorite times in Halo Two. I only have, uh, I only have two memories in Halo Two that I will remember forever. Uh. My one memory is um, hanging out with people in a clan called uh, KSI. Mm. Fun fact, by the way, and this video does exist. Uh, <laughs> KSI, the actual YouTuber KSI, he got his name from our clan because he was in the clan. <laughs> and we were we were in parties with him all the time. So... <laughs> <laughs> and he will and he will say this like I'm I'm sure there's a video out there somewhere I think I brought it up one time, but anyway we would all be chilling in the lobbies, and uh, sometimes we would just stay up for hours just talking about random stuff and we would also be starting custom games and we would do super bounces in the map we wouldn't even be trying to kill each other, so there was all these fun bugs in the game, and if you hit this crack just right you flew up. A hundred feet in the air, and that was the that was one of my favorite memories from that game. And then my second one, which is really close with the first uh, first one I mentioned, is actually uh, competing in like Boost Mobile, uh, MLG, uh, Pro Circuit, getting ready for LAN because I was good enough to <laughs> play at LAN. Yeah. So uh, that was another fun memory back then you didn't have like only pro league you you had semi-pro and you had pro and the only difference between like a semi-pro and like a pro is a pro is actually sponsored by big corporations like there was stride gum back then mm. and like all these other brands and um they went to every single land around the country like anaheim and orlando all of them and if you were a semi, you were only able to make one or two events. And mine was in Chicago. So I, that was the only one I was able to get to because that's all I could afford. All I could afford was going to Chicago. That's that's okay. You, you, yeah. you've, you've done well for yourself. And you were... It sounds like you really enjoyed Halo 2. <laughs> sounds like you really enjoyed Halo 2. Um, which game helped your channel excel? Which game what? Which game helped your channel excel? Oh, excel? Uh, that would probably be Apex. I mean, uh, I actually just, I, I tell people all, this time, uh, all the time, I just, um, I became a content creator purely by accident. Uh, when I was posting on TikTok at the time, there was almost no gaming content, like hardly any. Um, Got it early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean there was there was realistically there was only like there was only like really like 19 of us, I think. Um and I could probably name them off in the top of my head if I really think hard, but there was like uh Professor Frags, uh Deadly Dill, uh Kyle Driver, uh Tony uh A Tony, uh Tony Romero, mm -hmm. uh, myself, um Dario Mike and a few other of us were out there and we were the like we were like the pioneers of the early days in TikTok Apex. And um, 
uh, my, one of my videos one day because I would just post random clips all the time. And it was a it was a skit video of mine because um, uh, I forget what it was. It was it was a bloodhound joke. It was this scene with um, the Emperor's New Groove, and it was this scene between the one evil lady and Grunk Crunk or whatever yeah. his name is. I think and, I've seen uh, this. It, I'm pretty sure I've seen it, this one. And it and it fit well with with being bloodhound. And then at the end of the the voiceover, my friend who joined a lobby with us because you have to like time it just right so that mm -hmm. your one friend can be on the enemy team and you can be on the same opposite team. Yeah, he shoots my friend who I'm filming as bloodhound at the end of the clip, and then bloodhound just falls over. <laughs> it, it was and that video just. It blew up, and then I had a few more skits that I did, like random ones about ranked and a few other things, and they those blew up. And then the real video, the, the real video <laughs> that blew up was the, the aim assist videos that I did, and people got so angry with me on those videos because... They, I, I don't know why people got angry because at, if I sound, I guess the only thing that I can think of as why people got so angry with that video and it was favorited so many times, shared so many times and viewed so many times was literally because I had a solid argument. That's the only thing that I can think of is I had a very solid argument and people that just made people on the opposite side just very heated and angry and then all the controller guys they saw all these guys getting very heated that were stitching my video and responding to it and saying i was stupid and they're commenting in the comments and they're laughing their asses off they're like man he's got under their skin mm. like jeez <laughs> it's funny because yeah that's my content that blew up was the amos stuff and like the PC versus console wars and stuff like that. Um, I think one of them, actually, one of them was like you said. I I per, well, I mean, I per, I was only able to provide the. Um, uh, the, it was more of like PC versus console where it was like, you know, PC has more of a advantage because of, you know, the visual recoil effects of having, you know, larger FOV and whatever else. But I couldn't use like Warzone because I have like an Xbox one. So I couldn't. So this is this, this, this is when Warzone was out at the time, the first one. So like consoles didn't have that. So I was like, <laughs> so I was like in zombies and like Cold War, like, see, look, 120 FOV, you looks like you run faster and stuff like that. But I think a lot of people were, you know, because you don't actually run faster, but like visually it looks like you do. And visually you, you do have less recoil, but like people will make oh, the argument. Right. I, that video definitely had um, some solid, some solid ar ar arguments. And I, and I think that's the reason why. Uh, a lot of people were just like commenting on it, like, you know what the hell you're talking about, it's stupid. So, yeah, pretty much what you said, I experienced the exact same thing. That's also why a lot of my videos got a lot of hate, too. <laughs> yeah. And it's yep. exhausting. It really is. <laughs> I, 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 like, it was going, it's going back to what I was saying earlier. Earlier, it's just people just let their whole life define them by a single sentence, whether, you know, it, it be aim assist or, it be a controller or a mouse and keyboard. I've played both. I've played both of them in old games. I've played both of them in modern games. I went over to my buddy's house and played mouse and keyboard for like the first time in like 20 plus years. And I got play of the game in Overwatch. It felt like riding a bike again. So I've, I've played both. I understand both. I understand aim assist. Like it's, it's been in video games <laughs> forever. Yeah. So it, it ain't going anywhere. It's yeah. not like it's not like the devs are rubbing their hands together and saying, like, how how can I make these PC M and K kids <laughs> so angry? I know I'm gonna give the yeah. controller kids aim assist. No, that's not what they're doing. Like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, they're they're not like oh you know this this will piss somebody off. Like they're not yeah they're not like plotting against you. You know, <laughs> it, it's it's all just a bunch of tin foil hats just like coming yeah. up with conspiracy theories. <laughs> It's so true. Oh God, which uh, which which topic helped 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 
Yeah. Which topic helped your channel excel? Would it just be Apex, or was it the aim assist? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've had a lot of successful videos over the years because I've been doing it for three years. Um, I've had videos where, you know, my 20 Bomb series. Uh, I I never really played for 20 Bomb. I always played with my friends. If we did good, great. We got killed, crappy. But I decided one day because my friends were playing solo one day and my one friend got two 20 bombs in like a week. And then my other friend, he was like, well, I want a 20 bomb. So he played solo by himself for like two days straight. And he got like two 20 bombs. And then I'm sitting over here like, shit. I now I need one. one. <laughs> now I got to get one. Now I have to, now I have to get three. <laughs> yeah. So then I started that series. And for, for whatever reason, uh, people really, really like uh, jived with it. I think they could just, I think the reason that people gravitated towards that series in particular was just because it, it felt real. Like, because it, it, it wasn't like those videos that you see on YouTube, like, um, people like uh i got 23 kills in a pred lobby or i got 23 yeah. kills in a pro league like it was just <laughs> it was just an average guy who had a goal and he wanted to complete it and he set out to do it and i think that just resonated with so many people and it was more relatable than any other youtube or whatever yeah. video was out at the time yeah it's it's funny that you say that because that that was actually the series that um, TikTok started to su suggest your videos back to me again. Because so everyone I've interviewed so so far, it's the same thing. Like I barely see their videos any, any, anymore. Like I have to actively go to your page to find videos because like it's because it's it's TikTok. Yeah, it's TikTok, it's, and I hate TikTok with every yeah. fiber of my being. <laughs> I hate TikTok so much. But like yours stopped showing up, and uh, average I told you about. I reek of awesome. I've interviewed him too. Same, same, same thing. Like I, there, there are even people with millions of followers that like I still I never get their videos any, anymore. It's like it's one video every like hundred videos they'll 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 post that gets over like ten or twenty thousand views or something. That's what they'll sh they'll they'll show to me. And I'm just like, why? Why do you keep doing this to me? Show me the people that I that I follow, dude. <laughs> It, it's literally TikTok. It, it's not anyone's fault. Like, your content doesn't suck. I mean, in some regards, like, as a content creator, you always have to constantly be critiquing yourself and yeah. always striving to get better. But if people liked your style one day in one video and you didn't change anything in the next video, but the next video doesn't go anywhere or it doesn't reach, it doesn't reach a, what I'd call a normal view count for yeah. being in that style then it's not your fault like don't think it's your fault and that's what because i mentor like i don't even know how many we have now there's like 10 or 12 of them um young up and coming content creators that want to like make a name for themselves and i mentor them i give them all the tips all the tricks everything that i've done everything that i've used like everything and i tell them every single time do not let the views, the followers, and everything get to you. Because at the end of the day, it's just a number. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you have fun making the video. And if you felt like at the end of the day, you put out your best product. That's it. If you felt like you put out your best video, then you should be satisfied with that. All these algorithms and stuff, they, they, they tweak them all the time to set off a, a dopamine in your brain so that you can get addicted to keep posting. That's how they get you to keep posting. Yeah. They, 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 do, they do all these strategies to keep you posting. Like, they'll remove followers. Uh, I had a mutual of mine who got removed uh, from following me like five times. They had to follow me back like five different times. And they said, dude, this is the weirdest thing. Like, I keep following you, but then it's removing me at the same time, like, two or three days later. I'm like, dude, that's so weird. And a bunch of my creator friends, we've noticed the same thing. And yeah. TikTok, it's just TikTok. They, that, that's, that's what they do to keep you posting. And I, I don't think, I think people are going to do a study, probably, like, 
maybe 10, 15 years later down the road. And yeah. um, they're going to find that these social media sites they treat that that treated their creators like this they put a big mental strain on them like huge and people don't realize it like uh who was it sweet tales is currently on a break from a mental health break a streamer content creator yet yeah, she's been on a mental health break for like i haven't gotten her months. videos e e either in the longest time like <laughs> he tifu tifu stopped making tifu, content yep. because because uh, he was having like a mental breakdown. He looked at his life one day and he was just like, what am I doing? And people, I'm telling you, it's the social media sites. Mm -hmm. Isn't you, your content doesn't suck. You can take a break just as long as you know that what you put out was your best product. That's all that matters. If you have fun with it, great. Don't worry about the numbers and all the BS. That's literally the social media sites. I wish I had you uh, throughout this journey, throughout throughout my six year journey. <laughs> it would have been nice to hear that. <laughs> Instead, I had to tell yeah. myself that, and then I had no one else to like tell me you're doing great. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, trust me, I know it. It gets very hard. It yeah, gets very very hard. Yeah, it's it's uh it's definitely not not easy, and it definitely is taxing. But yeah, that really that's solid advice. Definitely, it's. Just do make make the best video, and that's all that matters. And have fun yep. doing it. <laughs> yeah, the numbers are, are going to go like this. This is the numbers. <laughs> it's just it's just a it's just a wave of of you know <laughs> of strain, and, and it's just out of your control. As soon as you press that post button, it's literally out of your control. Mm -hmm. It could it, it could be lost interest <clears throat> from your community, or it could very well be the social media site twisting the algorithm just a little bit to kind of put an itch in your brain to make more, do yeah. more. So don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> there's, there's definitely a theory behind that. I mean, I'm, I'm stuck in 200 view, view jail, but I don't really care at this point. Um, but the, at least that's, 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 that's what they're calling it. But some, some people, uh, I, I, I saw a video on TikTok about people saying that um, they're trying to get you to spend money to, push your stuff to, to like, you know, promote your posts, especially they definitely are because I've seen so many sponsors, you know, sp you know, sponsorship ads, you know, if you're scrolling and it's just like, yeah, you know, I promoted my TikTok stuff and now I'm getting thousands of views and I'm just like, that's cool. Scroll, scroll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do it. They do it all the time. They do it all the time, man. Yeah. So I've noticed that. So I'm like, it might be, it might be true, but um, what was the thing that you liked the most about Apex? Oh God, uh, a Apex was the first game since Halo that I just really, really loved the gun mechanics and sounds. Mm. Um, for for a lot of people, I mean, for a lot of people, the most satisfying thing is like the graphics or the visuals or like you know like the gameplay don't get me wrong gameplay uh, apex gameplay is top tier yeah but but the thing that really itches my brain that gets me going is the sounds the reloads how the guns sound and also the knocks and the kills and getting a wipe and everything and apex was the first game where it everything just hit right everything felt right everything sounded right um visually it 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 was all in sync and it worked and I was like, wow, dude, this is really good. So I just kept playing. What's your favorite sound effect in the in the game? Oh, the, the knock. I was going to say, sure. I was gonna, it's either like, going to be the win or, or, or the knock. <laughs> no, it's the knock. When you get the knock, that's that's satisfying. You want to get another one after yeah. that. Yeah, it is kind of a dopamine hit. I don't know what it, it definitely Call of Duty Warzone doesn't feel the same. The, the knocks in Warzone don't feel the same. No, not at all. Yeah, I mean, Apex I, I definitely I, got it. I, I'm hoping they change it, but no. I mean, Apex <laughs> overall has uh, superior gameplay. It has superior sound. Um, the only thing that I'd say that Apex is lacking in is uh, just content-wise, um, they're they're lacking in a structure. I would say, like an overarching arcing structure for the game like a live service game whereas like call of duty and fortnite just 
do it 10 times better. Their gameplay isn't necessarily better, but they just have a better structure for a live service game mm. than Apex does. And it, it, they've been they've been struggling for a long time. <laughs> have Have you found speak, speaking on uh, the topic of sound? Have Have you found that uh, Apex is spotty, or no? Whenever people shoot come, come up from behind you or come 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 into third party footsteps, uh, mostly no. I mean, on the one hand, I understand it because audio in the game is very terrible. Uh, Horizon has almost no audio. <laughs> Pathfinder doesn't have audio with his grapple when he lands, and he's like a thousand pound robot. Yeah. Um, but he, for some reason, has the loudest goddamn footsteps when he's walking around a hallway, like tiptoeing around a hallway. It, <laughs> it's so bizarre. Don't get me wrong. I understand it. I've experienced it. But I come from an era in gaming where we didn't really rely so much on the sound. We yeah. relied more on the positioning, like how we were playing or entering a new area or how we were rotating around the map. Like, yeah. we didn't really rely on the sound. I think the sound kind of has made a crutch for a lot of players. Like, they depend on it now. And I'm not saying... Like, I'm guilty of that too. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not saying that I, yeah, I'm too. not guilty, but I'm definitely guilty. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. The sound has been, uh, especially in Call of Duty, I've, it's definitely a lot worse. But Apex, I found a couple spotty times, especially when we're getting third partied. Um, sometimes I'm just like, you know, yeah, like Pathfinder just waltzes in through the door, and I'm like from behind, and I'm like, I doors right here. How did I not? hear him <laughs> like you know what i mean yeah. and like nobody's firing everyone's standing still and like just pathfinder comes and <laughs> beams somebody and i'm like no right he's there cool <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that before didn't but know, he's there <laughs> he's there so so are his three other teammates he's got gibby and someone else that's he that's huge i don't know how i'm not hearing any footsteps from the side of my headset <laughs> weirdest thing oh man um, so what was, let's see, what is the thing that you hated about Apex that made you almost stop playing? Well, actually right now I'm taking a season break. I haven't played the new season at all. Oh. I have it, I have it downloaded. Like it's the, I'm, I, I can critique something and not rage quit it. If I get to the point where I feel like I need to just, I'm angry at it. And I need to uninstall it, get it out of here. Like. Then, um, you know, I'm not being an authentic fan of the game. Mm. So, I, I, like, I, I, feel, I feel like right now Apex needs to really reevaluate itself in terms of how it comes out with content and how it progresses forward with updates. Um, and I say that because there was a perfect example there was an octane skin in the store probably like two weeks ago you got the octane skin which was like a scarecrow mask and you got a gun skin it was 25 dollars. you look at a you look at a bundle in call of duty for the same price you get a legendary skin you get two gun skins you get three gun charms you get a calling card you get a you just get more and it's just like I'm paying twenty five dollars for an octane skin and a gun skin, which is heavily based on RNG, by the way. Mm. Like I don't know if I'm gonna run into that game or that gun in the game. I might not. Yeah. So, it's just it it just blows I think I think they just they overshot the value of what they were offering players. And I think I think Apex is needs to do a little bit better security on their files because leaks are terrible. They are really destroying the game. And I will st I will stand on that hill. I will stand on that hill to the <laughs> day I die. Leaks are terrible for video games, all right? They, I mean, you can leak something. Like, game studios leak their own content all the time. But Call, they Call of Duty? <laughs> yeah, but they they give you they give you snapshots, tidbits, 
these guys in Apex, they leak the entire season. <laughs> we already knew what three store rotations were four weeks in advance before the season dropped. Oh my god. So what do we have to look forward to? Like, d these these mouth breathers, I I'm sorry, I'm, I mean that in the most polite way possible. <sighs> you people that dig in the files, I am calling mouth breathers at the moment. Please take no offense. These mouth breathers... <laughs> <laughs> literally the point <laughs> they they have no they have no couth whatsoever they they just dump they regurgitate everything online within two hours of the season dropping you have nothing to look forward to the entire season and that's part their fault and part respawn's fault because yeah. respawn needs to have better security and they need to um they they really need to communicate better with their player base Dr drop some leaks here and there this is this week's store rotation like just little things here and there but it's like on the other side the, the the mouth breathers on the other side they dropping everything that that does no service to the game whatsoever because i'm already seeing the tweets right now people are saying that they're already bored of apex this is dog shit like <laughs> i'm already seeing them <laughs> oh I can't be too far off from where I am right now, with my opinion. <laughs> um, I was actually going to ask you to, if you wanted to play sometime, but I guess that's not happening. <laughs> well, the the only reason that I took this season off is because I was getting to the point where I was getting very angry with the yeah. game. And I told my friends and I told everyone, I said, I think I just, I, I think I just need a break. I haven't I have I've played this game since season zero every day. I think I should just take a break for one season. It's not gonna kill me. Yeah. Def definitely. That's that's good mental health uh, ad ad advice to anyone who who's watching. If you get too upset with a game hey, don't a play it. <laughs> it. It will be there when you get back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Except for if it's Call of Duty. If you wait a little too long then then the next one will come out. <laughs> yeah, that that's definitely true. Oh man. Um I was actually gonna ask you a different question, but you uh you told me today that you uh you stopped streaming. Why why'd you stop streaming? Uh just personal stuff. Okay. I have I, I have personal IRL stuff going on. It has nothing to do with uh lack of passion for it or anything like that. I really enjoy my streams i enjoy my community and my mods that are there on every single stream um it, it was just my own personal life was was starting to uh make me depressed make me upset and you can't when you stream you have to have a 24 7 personality approach to it yep if you're not doing good mentally or you're kind of in a funk for like a month or whatever, then it's it's not going to be beneficial for your yeah. stream. I hate to break it to you. Yeah, that's very true. That's good. That's great advice too. Um, do you enjoy playing ranked or do you enjoy playing pubs? I used to enjoy playing ranked. Uh, <laughs> I can't. I can hardly find anyone to play with in ranked, but that's besides the point. Uh, probably pubs, but pubs gets kind of repetitive after a while. Uh, look, pub, pubs is great if if you just want to chill and hang out with a few buddies, crack a beer and joke around and make fart jokes and then fart in your mic and then sniff it later. Like, that's fine. <laughs> that's cool, bro. But, like, if you're looking for that high-octane energy, like me being a player with my background where I came from, I would most certainly love. I would rather be playing in a diamond master lobby than just making peepee -pee jokes in a pub lobby. <laughs> just me. No one should take offense to that. By by the way, and be be offended all you all want. You want. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I mean, if you. Uh... If you want to play ranked, I'll play ranked. I've the I've never gotten pred, but I've gotten like maybe diamond. I think was like the highest, maybe. I, I don't I don't really remember, but it was like season twelve or thirteen when I got that. So 
I played Apex, but I probably played Call of Duty a lot, a, a, a lot more. But I definitely got into Apex because I love being like. Well, my favorite main is honestly Fuse, and th that probably says something about me. But you're the I, dad. I, you're I fucking, the dad. Yeah, dude, I love Fuse, bro. <laughs> I, I love his jokes. I love everything about him. It's great. <laughs> this is like one of his intros where he just like. What the hell does he say? Uh, well, like old Fusey or something? No, he was like, he was like, oh, congrats, con con congratulations! You called them the big guns or whatever. It's my favorite. It's my favorite intro. I like use them just so I can hear it. <laughs> I'm such a loser. <laughs> 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 oh man, but no, but I love Fuse. He's like, he's he's my favorite. Um, what's what's your favorite mean? Or legend uh, rather? Uh, well, when I first started playing Apex, I was a Wraith main and over 2000 kills with her in season zero leading up to one so i was a wraith main <laughs> uh but then i switched to pathfinder in season one like halfway through season one i want to say um because i saw like a video that uh diego soros did mm. and um he was showing people how to play pathfinder and so I just picked up Pathfinder and I had a really good time playing with Pathfinder because at the at the time, uh, people need to remember at the time, we didn't know everything about like the wall bouncing and the super gliding and the tap strafing and everything. So um, j uh, grapple jumping or like launching yourself with Pathfinder's grapple, that back then that was considered skillful. If you could <laughs> if you could control Pathfinder's grapple to a degree, you were considered a crackhead. Like Pathfinder, Pathfinder in like season one before Octane really blew up. Mm. Uh, like you, we were the Octane mains back then. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> we were the Octane mains back then. Yeah, I, and he had a and he had a broken hitbox too. So p people would just shoot at him and bullets would go through him. <laughs> Damn. Well, Apex used to be fun, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of fun. Oh man. Um why did you change your logo? Why did I change my logo? I don't think it was this one. I think it was like wasn't it like less aggressive? <laughs> it, it was less aggressive, but it's along the, it, it's along the same theme. So okay. I I've, I've had that logo, my original logo for 2 3 years. And, uh, you know, uh, I got to be like Madonna with the cone boobies. I got to reinvent myself every <laughs> now and again. You know what I mean? No, and I if you don't you. know, if you don't know what that is, if you're watching this, uh, Google it, but Google at your own risk. So <laughs> FYI. I get that reference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. Which game has more substance, Call of Duty or Apex, in your opinion? Call of Duty. Why? <laughs> like, uh, I mean, Apex has core like mechanics is the best, hands down. When you're in the game and facing other squads and other players, hands down, one hundred percent the best, no questions. Um, but in terms of substance. Call of Duty just has more. It has it has solos. It has duos. It has quads. It has uh, DMZ. It has um, Resurgence, which is basically like the strike strikeout LTM that's going on right now in Apex. That's basically Resurgence <laughs> in Call of Duty. Mm. So yeah. I mean, they they just have they just have a plethora of things to do in that game. You you you'd be hard pressed to be bored in that game. Like you have, you have to really hate call of duty <laughs> or you're really burnt out on call of duty to, to not find something to do in that game. I must Whereas, be burnt out then. <laughs> hey man. I mean, we're, we all get there. I mean, I'm yeah. taking a season break from apex. So, I mean, we all, we all get there. Yeah, uh, it's true. And then in terms of like apex, uh, they have mixtape which mixtape has been the exact same three game modes, I think for like two, two seasons now, three seasons now, which on Apex. Yeah. Oh, uh, which 
that I mean that's cool. I enjoy a good control game just as much as the next person. Yeah. TDM TDM's all right. Uh, gun run or whatever that that shit's ass. <laughs> I don't. It is. I feel, it's so bad. I, <laughs> it's I mean, so bad. If you like that game mode, more power to you. But I'm sorry, objectively, <clears throat> that game mode is so ass. I don't understand the scoring. The guns <laughs> rotating around, like how that works, is ass. <laughs> it's terrible. It's so bad. Yeah. Um, and then you have pubs or ranked, and that it's the same game, but one offers you value and the other one doesn't, unless you're mm. like playing with friends. So it doesn't have a lot of substance. That's a good argument. I, I like that. I, I agree. I, I, honestly, you're right. Yeah. What is it? <laughs> it's so true, though. Like, I can, Control is the best out of all those game modes. <laughs> it is. It's literally the best. It's so... Everything else is so bad. <laughs> and, I don't, and I don't understand why Respawn, for the love of God, would have a mode called... A playlist called Mixed Tape when they haven't mixed the tape since tw like 2021 <laughs> why like ju just change out of you have a plethora of modes to choose from and LTMs that you you've had us play in the past just throw just throw one in for god fucking sakes just throw one in i don't care if it's the holiday i don't care if it's the winter fucking express throw that bitch in there if it's the middle of goddamn july i don't care throw it in there <laughs> Throw in a throw 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 in an effective game 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 mode in the middle of July. I don't give a shit. Just give me something. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Just give me something. Just something, please. Oh God. Um, how much money have you spent on Apex? Uh, probably around a hundred dollars. That's not bad. Oh, no, not bad at all. <laughs> uh, I mean, I I support the game as uh as much as I can. Uh, yeah. like I I bought the the book the apex legends book uh there was like the pathfinder lore book um obviously i buy skins every now and again that that i can and uh you know I i'm one of those players that bought the season one battle pass and i never bought another battle pass i always collected the coins and rolled them into the next battle pass <laughs> that's how i did the call of duty <laughs> that was the same thing i i, yep. I bought i bought like five or six bat battle passes that I just played all the way through and just like was able to buy the next one. That's funny. <laughs> I'm glad Real there's someone realistic, else with that strat. <laughs> realistically, I've only bought one battle pass in Apex. <laughs> realistically, just one. <laughs> That's funny. Um, if you, uh, well, this is a uh, no more on the money topic. If you had all the money back from all the money that you spent on games, how, how much would, would you have? Like oh dating back God. all the way. <laughs> this is a depressing no number to think about, at least for all the other people that I've had on, even for myself. So don't feel so bad. <laughs> I'd probably pay off my college and my home mortgage loan if I had. <laughs> Damn. Like all the like all the money from <clears throat> everything that I've spent on video games, including like they don't make those big thick guides anymore. Like uh, GameStop used to come out with guides. <laughs> yeah, those those bitches were like twenty, thirty bucks a pop. Okay, yes, bro. Yes, they were. So, I bought those like every time like a new game came out. Uh, I spent so much money on peripherals and uh, merchandise and like just in-game items and just shit. Don't even get me started on RuneScape. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> I spent a lot. <laughs> <laughs> rough estimate 180 thousand probably probably like around 100 180 200 thousand Damn. roughly vines well, that's I mean, the highest we've had so far that's a new record <laughs> well dude you're talking from the time that i was like five or six <laughs> from all the way now and i'm 30 fucking four like i've been gaming longer than some pro players have been alive <laughs> Like the their mom was still wiping off their stomach after the dad had gotten done, and I was already playing video games. Okay, <laughs> so like, like I've been playing for a really long time. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, me too. But I, I, I don't, you know, I think I've only accumulated any, anywhere from 30 to 60 grand in games, like consoles, games. I, I also don't buy microtransactions. I, I have never bought any microtransactions at, at all. Nothing. Like, literally nothing. I- I certainly do. And then there was my world there was my World of Warcraft stint where I was paying monthly for that bitch. Oh my god, that was so expensive. Oh man. Do you, do you regret it? That now you kind of thinking about it or no? You do? Absolutely. I mean <laughs> no shame to the World of Warcraft homies. Like I'm sure you guys are doing great and uh all hail Azeroth or whatever you guys say. But um that that game was just not for me, and I don't know why I continued playing it. I I honestly don't. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> um, let's see. Is there? Uh, is arenas more fun than than the BR in in, in Apex? In, in your Hell opinion? No. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. What What about if it was just con- control? Control is fun. Only because it's chaotic and there's a lot of players. Mm. Arena arenas was because it was three v three and the gun balancing and legend balancing against a three v three was terrible. Yeah, absolutely terrible. So, okay, so the VR is more fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Got it. Um, do you think AAA games <clears throat> such such as Apex, Call of Duty, ba- ba- Battlefield have lost their touch? Yeah, a hundred percent. Do you um, think? Just, oh, sorry, go ahead. It, I mean, it's just like Blizzard, Activision, um, like even Xbox. They they were the rebels back in. The- and just one more through here. If you've watched this far, please like the video and subscribe. Back in the day, like when we were growing up, they were the guys that were going against the grain. They were the dudes yeah. pitching to Bill Gates and all these. Uh, banks and CEOs saying we can make this work this could be big but nowadays you know Phil Phil Spencer like love you Phil but it's all it's all suit and it's all suit and ties nowadays and it's just they're all great edge and they're they only care about money and it's just like oh god you guys are so out of touch with the normal gamer it's unreal but that's how that's how it has to be, though. No, you, do you think? I mean, at, at, at that that level, right? No, it, it, that's how it has to be now. Yeah, for, because it's like bringing in, it's like the changing of the old guard, right? So we are on the edge of a new, I believe, a new era in in gaming. So we, we are like on the edge. We have a mixture of the old guard, the old dogs, the Activision, the Blizzards, the Xbox. They they are here. And the new crowd is right around the corner. And I'm talking about like those games that you could tell they took a lot of time and effort and heart to really think about. Like like those games like uh like Phasmophobia. And, and, and like insomnia was an, an indie game and it just like started out and I don't mean to like list off like horror games, but yeah. I think you, I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to say. Like, just like these steam games and everything that are like, uh, 12, like 12 bucks or like 15 bucks are some of the best games that you could play all year. It's yeah. crazy. So I think we're just, we're, we're at that time. We're, we're inching closer. It's, it's almost time. Pretty soon you're you're not gonna see them like all the old dogs like not I wouldn't say that they're gonna be gone because they're just way too big to be gone. But I think they're gonna take a more laid back and relaxed approach to gaming going forward than some of these smaller guys. These smaller guys are gonna be the ones pumping out all the next big great games of the future. So so many questions to, to drill into what, to what you just said, but <laughs> <laughs> you think? Um, do you think that cloud gaming might be the future of that too? With within that, uh, too too soon to tell. I think cloud gaming is. Ominous. I've tried cloud gaming. 
trust me and it's it's dog shit and i wouldn't i wouldn't give that to my like five-year-old cousin and say here play this <laughs> like like you know the guy that you hand your phone to play candy crush no i wouldn't even do that i wouldn't even do that to him <laughs> oh it's funny because i do want to create a cloud gaming platform <laughs> it'll obviously better be, be better than what we have but <laughs> hey man just just remember like when we were in like elementary school and those people were playing the oregon trail and everyone failed at, with dysentery when they got to like Nevada <laughs> there was always that one kid in the class that made it <laughs> I don't know how he made it but the dude made it and you know you could be that dude so I'm just that's saying that's true that's true I mean it's not going to stop me but I mean I definitely want to make something that's way better I mean we could go into more detail off stream if you want or off off video but uh to su to sum it up it's like I saw Google Stadia was like the best option and I could make that 10 times better but the technology yeah. is not 100% there yet which is the big hurdle I mean I by day I'm I'm a project manager for websites so I have the knowledge of websites and I know I was like talking to like a lot of the developers and they're just like yeah that technology is not there yet we're getting there but it's not there yet. So like, we're probably about 10 years off. If that, you know, um, unless you want to reinvent WebGL and everything else, which is like, you know, a tire coding language, which isn't easy, but, um, yeah, the ultimate goal for all this is to create a cloud gaming platform, create games, um, and, you know, really definitely get, you know, uh, feedback, real feedback and, uh, change the way that the world, you know, s plays and perceives vi video games. And get all oh. the old dogs out because they they're fucking done <laughs> at this point. Yeah. They're toast. <laughs> they're toast, dude. And they know they're toast. They just keep pumping out the same shit every year, hoping that we don't notice. But we know they're toast. Yeah. It's just a matter. It's just a matter of time, you know. Right now, that the era that we're moving into is uh, is going to be uh, more of a PC era. It's going to be, you know, dominated by the steams and it's going to be dominated by the pcs as pcs overtake the market of consoles because console sales are way down and they have consistently gone down um you you're just going to see it so and north america is going to move away from the controller and be more accustomed to mouse and keyboard which is mm. so it's the way it's going so yeah i'm all i'm all for it though i, I like it Personally, um, it's funny that you say that because personally, uh, especially for the PC thing, um, I think that Warzone was one of the main, there's obviously probably other games, but from firsthand experience, I think, the, especially, you know, Activision, the the acquisition of, of, you know, Activision from Microsoft and stuff like that, I think they've been testing it to see if they could make the mobile game impulse spending on console and on pc which is interesting as you say that because i think warzone was that test and it, it we, we like we passed we passed that test like we're willing to buy anything even, even if it's higher because mobile gaming is you know if you've ever played mo mobile games i'm assuming you have yeah it's s small transactions nine, 99 cents but you do it multiple times this they tested it and they said well we could charge 25 dollars to get this person to buy two two or three times so now they're just they're upping the scale, which fluff the numbers, which at the end of the day, they can pretty much just do exactly what mobile gaming does, but with a higher price tag and people will still spend money on it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. So that that to me is an interesting take. And I'm like, we are I talk about this a lot on the podcast and just in general. But yeah, we're screwed if we keep letting them do that kind of stuff to us <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Microtransactions are so bad. Yeah. They're so terrible. Yeah. But at the same time, the some of the skins that Warzone put out are so good. Yeah. They Visually so and good. just they're just like it's just cool. Like they're just awesome skins. Emotes yeah. and stuff like that too. But see, like I I don't mind I don't mind paying a microtransaction for a really good live yeah. service skin. Like if it's a if it's good. I don't mind that you do it or I don't mind paying for it. Yeah. But if it's 
but it, but if you're charging me a hundred and sixty dollars for a damn recolor from season three on a gun, you are out of your mind, and you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> That was the biggest money grab scheme that I've ever seen, ever. That was so <laughs> ass. You know what I'm talking about, right? I do not, offhand, no. Which, oh. which, one, are you, which one are you talking about? <laughs> they had some type of collection event or something in, uh, in Apex, and it was at the end of the collection event, if you collected everything, and you got a recolor of a Peacekeeper Battle Pass skin, mm. a reactive Battle Pass skin. Keep in mind... The battle pass skin cost you ten dollars, <laughs> and you bought and you had a whole bunch of shit in that battle pass. Not just the skin. Keep in mind, you had the collection event with twenty four items, and at the end of it was a recolor <laughs> of a battle pass skin that you originally paid ten bucks for. That wow. if if that doesn't scream scam to me, I don't know what does. <laughs> That's a huge scam. <laughs> That's I mean, if, I mean, so shit. If I, if if I, dude, I'm telling you, if I want a new recolor every single day, I, all I have to do is change the saturation and the and the color hue on my monitor. <laughs> I'll have I'll have I'll have a new skin every week if I want it. That's that's true. <laughs> that's funny. I can't believe they're they're. I mean, a lot of people are saying that even my, this Mono Warfare three was definitely a cash grab, like a scam cash grab because. They're saying it's supposed to be DLC. It's horrible. But I'll, maybe I'll get your opinion on that in a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, going back Probably to our will. original question, do you think that these larger companies will ever gain the respect back or actually gain their, you know, their their touch back? No. No. You think they're Absolutely. done forever? Absolutely not. I mean, th like I said before, they're too big to fail. Mm -hmm. They're always there's always going to be uh, power and money. It's just how the world works, unfortunately, and that's very true in gaming. So they're not going anywhere. But in terms of, um, I think, what the word I'm looking for is respect amongst gamers and to idolize, like idolize people. Because when we were kids, and we got we saw an interview from, you, you know, uh, Todd Howard. For example, they're like, oh, dude, Todd Howard, like that's amazing. <laughs> now people can't stop making memes out of the dude. Like they're just making fun. Of him. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I I, I think they're uh, they're headed towards the uh, the downward tra uh, tra trajectory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate, really, because they started out. You know, they started out like you said, like they're convincing the you know the big heads, like, hey, we're, we have this idea and it's gonna work. And then like, yeah, it won't work. And now they're bill they're worth billions of dollars, but it's like you have to be corporate now. It's really just like the the I, I guess the way of life almost because do you watch the Hacksmith on, on, on YouTube? Have you ever seen that? They they like create no. things. They they make like Iron Man suits and like create crazy shit. Sounds it's, great. Yeah, it's awesome. But um the the one video that I saw was they got away from their nine to five jobs, the corporate world to do mm -hmm. something that they love but now they're at like 10 tw 12 million sub subscribers and like they're a corporate office like they got away from the thing that they wanted to get away from but the, now they're doing the <laughs> thing that they have to it's weird right like yeah it's, it's a weird thought super odd <laughs> it's it's very odd that's kind of like <laughs> like i have people it's not that this is related or it's ever going to happen to me because i don't really I really don't give a shit, but uh, my, uh, everyone tells me like, oh, Panda, you should be like pumping out YouTube videos every day. You should be, you should be posting a new TikTok every day. Like you have such a big chance to make it. And I just turned to him like, I don't really fucking care, dude. <laughs> like I could give two shits less. I have, I have a, I have a good job. I have a wonderful family, a good house. I don't need all that shit. Yeah. Like, like, why do I want to deal with this up and down roller coaster of depression and then put myself in a position where now this becomes my job? Why? Why yeah. do I want to do that to myself? Yeah, that's that's the that's that's the flip side of the token that a lot of people don't think about is just, you know, 
you're you're turning your hobby into a job and you get away from your job to do your hobby so it's like <laughs> it's just it's such a backwards <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. hard to explain out yeah. loud, but that's pretty much it. Like your hobby turns into your job, or your job, you 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 do your hobby to escape your job, but then you, your hobby ends up turning into a job. <laughs> Absolutely, and yeah. That's, that's how it's always going to be with with money and recognition. Yeah. Anytime there's rec, anytime there's either one or both of them, money or recognition, it, it's it's going to feel like a job. Yeah, that's just that's just how it is. Yeah, that's very true. And as the best you can do is just enjoy your hobby and don't get too big. <laughs> just get paid a certain amount of money just to have your little hobby on the side. That's it. <laughs> don't ever create a corporate environment. <laughs> so, like, okay, so like this is really funny because um, I get internet trolls all the time. Like yeah. all the time, like they show up randomly every few months. Like if <laughs> if I don't have videos popping off every week, I'm sorry, you were over the hill, old man. <laughs> Step aside, you've fallen off. Uh, okay, Timmy. Like I could give two shits less. I could stop making videos tomorrow and still make a grand on TikTok if I wanted to, because I'm in creator programs where all I'd have to do is just edit stupid brand videos. That you see every two or three videos, and I'd make like a grand a month. I could, I could care less. The reason that I do it still is because I like doing it, and I've met so many wonderful people through doing content that I still want to be involved with them. Yeah. Uh, not not fuck face in the comments, but them <laughs> yeah. is not is fine. Yeah, people like me. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. People like you. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that makes sense. Um, I, it's pretty much the same the same thing with me. I, uh, I, I I took a short break not too long ago, so and I'm like getting back into doing this stuff again. But I used to post a lot. Like I posted before I stopped. I was posting three videos a day on YouTube, <laughs> and I did that for eight months, maybe longer. Gonna yeah. burn yourself out doing oh, yeah. that. Well, I mean, it was <laughs> a, a lot. A lot of it was o- Opus Clip and uh, podcasts and like interviews. So I would just use that, and then I would like edit the clips because Opus Clip. Everyone's like, you can just upload your two-hour video to Opus Clip, and then it'll make you all these viral videos. And I'm like, they suck. They literally they keep all the pauses in. Like you have to edit the videos. Like you're not just gonna get famous just by putting that stupid like minute and a half long vi- vi- video and like 40 seconds of it is you just pausing or like silence in the video <laughs> like you actually have to work to get the views <laughs> hey man it's the mentality nowadays going back to what we were saying at the very beginning of the conversation people just want the easy yeah route out if you yeah. offer them the easy route out they'll pay you whatever yeah. they don't care yep so that's true and i tell and i tell people all the time like i i literally just edit on my phone YouTube videos, shorts, TikToks, all my clips are on my phone. I edit on my phone. I don't edit on my PC. None of that. And I've had a couple million view videos, 200, 500. It, you don't need all that shit, dude. You just yeah. need to have a you just need to have a will and there's a way. That's it. Yep. And then you see people that like have like just start out and they're like they have like their leds they have their new brand new computer they have their brand new 200 hundred dollar microphone they have their 600 hundred dollar headsets and you're just like clowns <laughs> i'm like the Absolute quality's clowns. good but then i'm like yeah. he has nothing to talk about <laughs> you okay you should have a setup like that if you are ninja money yeah agreed if, if you don't but have he even pay for money, a setup, he got it all sponsored by like Red Bull or something. <laughs> I know, but I, I'm just trying to make a point. Like, yeah. if, you, if you if you better be getting ninja money if your setup looks that crisp and clean. I'm yeah, sorry. Other, otherwise, if if you have no name recognition, or you know, if, if you just bought all this stuff and you think now I'm going to become big because my quality is so top notch. I'm sorry, that's not how it works, dude. You just look like a clown doing it because I, I don't know who you are. <laughs> I mean, you're a very shiny clown with a bright, <laughs> shiny nose, but I don't know who the fuck you are. Sorry. Uh, it's so true. Um, 
What's been the best part about the new eight? Well, actually, you didn't play that, so I can't even no. ask you that question. <laughs> no, I I'm sticking I'm sticking to my plan. I am not going to touch it. I'll ask people how it is, but I will not play it. I'm what was your favorite it. part about last season? Nothing. Not nothing at all. Nothing stands no- out. I dude, I literally played like 200 games last season, <laughs> the entire season, and you're talking to a player that on his casual side, will play anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 games in a season. On his hardcore side, he played over 3,000. Easy. Yeah. And and he went down to 200. <laughs> that last season was so ass. <laughs> it was so bad. Holy crap. I had to force myself to play. Yeah. Yeah, I found myself do, doing that too. <laughs> That's why I don't play much anymore. O- o- yeah. Only the games I want to play. <laughs> um, it, 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 re- response he, response just fucking around too much they're, they're tweaking they're tweaking shit like yeah. it's still in, it's still in beta they had <laughs> a lot of they had a lot of good things okay they had a lot of good things there was some minor tweaks that they needed to do that's fair but with respawn it doesn't seem like it's just a little tiny crank of the knob no, these these motherfuckers just pr- put their foot on the gas pedal and just run right into the brick fucking wall. Like, <laughs> dude, what are you doing? I just said, just turn right, not yeah. go right into my grandma's house. The fuck? <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, that's with yeah. all of them now at this point. Let's be honest. It's Call yeah. of Duty. That's Battlefield. I, I, used, I used to love Battlefield too. Can't Battlefield 2024 definitely improved, but. It, it, when it first came out, oh my god, the the mountain of glitches that 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 would even after their first patch, I was like, what would they even fix? Did they break more shit? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever played Battlefield, but like that's I, pretty I much did, what yeah. it was. <laughs> I, I played Battlefield One, like the old World War One, yeah, Battlefield. That that, that was that was the best one in the last like three years or whatever. <laughs> Just saying, dude, it, it was so good. I love the snipers in that game, and yeah. then you hear the. Ching, you hit the ching from yeah. the bullet coming out. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was so good. See, we're going back on sounds again. These are good <laughs> sounds. These make my brain feel good. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely sound quality is one. Of, well, that also applies to content creation, too. You, you have bad sound. No one's going to listen to you. Like, you, going back to what we said, all these visuals, if your microphone sucks, no one can really listen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. There is, depending there's on the topic. A, there's a li- yeah. There's a there's a little leeway in there. I mean, some I'm some of my videos are absolute shit, dog. <laughs> like like you hear the you hear the mic quality on some of my videos, and, but they do really well. I mean, at the end of the day, it just depends on the context of yeah. the content. That's right. That that is what you're trying to offer people and and people will like it regardless. I mean, it could be it could be a like a a fart video but if you make it but if you make it sound like beethoven's ninth symphony people are gonna watch that shit anyway yeah so it doesn't matter that's very true yeah you know what i mean context it's the topic of the video and everything but yeah you're right but but overwhelming and usually better audio does better no matter what just as the example you gave farts video will get better if you make it sound great (laughs) yeah make it sound good people are gonna listen to it anyway yeah They'll they'll watch they'll watch they'll listen to your podcast on on, on the way to work <laughs> if, throw, if the sound quality is good. <laughs> throw some T Pain auto tune on that flatulence <laughs> and then you'll be golden. Yep, exactly. Um, how much time do you have logged in games? Like to- like total time. Total, total time, dude. You know how they say like there's a, a third of your life is sleeping. Yeah. The next the next third of my life is playing video games. <laughs> I, I, I almost guarantee it. <laughs> I'm being dead serious too. I know you are. <laughs> if it if it wasn't if it wasn't at my daycare center where they had a Sega Genesis and kids, I was so good at goddamn video games. Kids were literally giving up their turn to let me continue to play, so that they could watch me play. And then get better like that. You were the original YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> uh, they they just had to put some of those little uh, two by four Lego bricks together and make a little TV screen and watch me, and then perfect, golden. That was YouTube, dude. That's funny. That's hilarious. That's yeah. 
I mean, I, I don't think I have that much time locked, but then again, you also spent a lot more money than I did. <laughs> yeah, a lot, I, of, a lot of money, time, everything. What's what's your most time logged in a game? In what game? Is it Apex, you, you think? No. No? No, not by, not by a long shot. It's probably a close second or third. But I would it would probably either have to be um it's most definitely number one is Halo two. I I one hundred thousand mm. percent have the most hours logged into a game on Halo two. Mm. Without a question. The second or third one is up for debate. It it could be Apex or it could also be League of, League of Legends. Because I played League of Legends when it first dropped in <laughs> twenty ten. Like mm. when it when it looked like Playmation. Like shit. <laughs> okay, so uh, I have a lot of hours logged in that game too. But now it's come a long way. I mean, the, the game looks great. Yeah, it does. Yeah, they got like cool like. Oh, they. I I I haven't really played played it. My my sister actually played it more than I did, but I'm a. Uh, I'm not a very uh war World of Warcraft person, but I've seen like videos on it and stuff like that. Uh, she also used to play what's similar to World of Warcraft. There's like another game that's. Um, that's similar to it. Um, it's like a, is it, what's it called? Turn-based strategy games. I, f- I forgot the name of it. Uh, I mean, me there's, there, there's, there's RTS games, which is real time strategy. Uh, those were really popular in the late nineties, early two thousands. That's when I had my PC. You're talking mm-hmm. about like Starcraft, uh, Warcraft, which was the predecessor to world of Warcraft. Mm. Um, and you also had like Age of Empires, and you know there was Halo Wars, which that's a very odd one. They they <laughs> got so like the Halo franchise was known for shooters. They were coming up in a time in the golden era of first person shooters. They make an RTS game in the middle of a golden era. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah. What are you doing? It's it's actually funny that you say that. Quick side note. I made a video on. Have you ever heard of Hell Divers? Um, so Hell Divers One was exactly that, and I made a video because uh, I thought like because um, what, what's what's the game called? Uh, the day the day before that game. Did you hear about that yet? No. It, it, it's like a new zombie game. It's it was pretty much just like everyone's saying it's fake, and I mean I still think it's fake, but. Um, I, so Hell Divers One was exactly that. It was a turn-based strategy type type. It was a strategy game like 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 Halo Wars, and then they made Hell Divers Two, and it was like it's like a third person over, over the over the shoulder game. Now it's not obviously as popular as, as Halo was, but um, I made a comment in my video about it, and I was like, I thought it was strange that they went from a strategy game to like a third person over over the shoulder shoot, shoot, shooter. So I thought it was fake. And then the the, the guy, I, I think so, somebody in the comment section was just like, why would you think that? It's they're, they're like named like another game that did it. And I'm just like, yeah, but like this game is, you know, a doesn't little bigger any, than that game. <laughs> it doesn't make it any less ass, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate, hate to break your heart, but. <laughs> oh, just, man. Just, just because Benjamin Franklin robbed the bank with his with his, with the dollar bills with his face on it, that doesn't make it any less illegal. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it's funny that you mentioned that because I, cause I thought about that and I was just like, yeah. It's kind of strange that they. It, it, it was strange when I heard about Halo Wars. I'm like, that's cool. And then like I looked at it and I was like, why is this? Why, how do you go from this to that? Why would you do that? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm all I'm all for experimentation. Yeah. I, I mean, I had my little stint in college. I get it. <laughs> but dude, like if you're good at something, stick to that thing. Like yeah. don't try and go like off the rails yeah you, you could go you could go a little bit off like just like dabble a little bit in something else yeah. you know do you but like don't do, do like, like third person or something thing. you know like <laughs> yeah, third person just, shooter like, don't do that <laughs> stay away like, from that like jazz hands do something crazy <laughs> yeah 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 exactly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> throw a move in there <laughs> oh god um for for the time locked in games i was also going to tell you too my lo- my longest t- tag, if you can guess from what I said before, was um, Mono for Call two. Duty. Yeah, it yeah. was Mono for two. I had like ninety days plus logged into that. That's also why I was ranked like under a hundred <laughs> at one point. But 
Yeah. Um, Modern Warfare One, I think I had over well over a hundred days. Um, and the funny thing too is um, Black Ops Three Zombies. I was ranked on under a thousand for like kills in that for like the longest time, and. I haven't looked in a while, but yeah, it was. It, I put I put a lot of time in that game too. Call, Call of Duty has consumed a lot of my life, <laughs> all the way from Big uh, Big Red One all the way up to like pretty much Black Ops Three. <laughs> consumed my life. Uh, I mean, I I played Modern Warfare like the original Modern Warfare yeah. Two, Modern Warfare Three, the, the, the better one, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Black Black Ops and Black Ops Two, and I kind of just. I kind of took a, a little break from Call of Duty at that point because I noticed that it was starting to become like it, it was starting to become like the Madden of shooter games, mm. and that was kind of that was kind of pissing me off a little bit. Yeah, like like I understand I understand <laughs> wanting to to go that same route that same direction, but when you're consistently putting out the same thing year after year after year after year. Yeah, you're starting to fall on the side of sports games there, my friend. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you, but <laughs> yeah, you're going a little too far there. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's 100% true. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I only have a few more questions, so I, I want to be, you know, um what I can't think of the word right right now. Um I don't want to take advantage of your time, but I can't think of the better word, so I I'm going to Take it as much time as you want, dude. I, I, I'm here. Yeah, I, I, you know, because I know you got to sleep too, right? So, hey, man, hey, man it's only ten thirty for me. That's it's true. Probably late for it's probably what time late is for it? you. What time is it right now for me? If it's ten, it's eleven twenty nine. So, hmm. wait, and it's only ten thirty for me. Yeah. Oh, did I look up the wrong time? I looked up the wrong time zone. <laughs> you said CST, right? Yeah, Central that's, Standard. That's Central. That, why did I, I? I looked up C, CST. Why? Why did it tell me three hours behind? What the hell? <laughs> God damn you, Google! <laughs> I have, I have no idea, dude. I don't know either. That's uh, that's a lot better. That's why I was like, that's why I was like, wow, he's talking to me early right right now. Like I thought I was gonna be like. <laughs> 11 30 my time and i'm like all right <laughs> let's oh, do bet. this <laughs> bet let's go i'll stay up until 1 30 <laughs> talking to you <laughs> oh man um do you think tap strafing is, is, is a glitch or do you think it's meant to be in the game oh it it's 100 percent a glitch thank you i mean God, I, thank you <laughs> i mean thank anyone you. that anyone anyone says that doesn't is lying to themselves I mean that doesn't that doesn't mean that I hate it. Like, yeah. That doesn't mean I hate it. I mm -hmm. think it's really cool. Like I love watching mouse and keyboard players uh, do that in game. Yeah. But if you don't believe you're not breaking the engine, you're smoking crack. Like you are. Like yeah. It's it's only until very recently that Apex has started including that in their trailers, and we're talking within a couple seasons you may they made no mention or visuals yeah. or anything they tried to remove it in like season 12 or 11 or or some shit like i i remember it was this big controversy like trust me it you're you're breaking it, it's a glitch it's a bug it's whatever you want to call it you're breaking the engine you're breaking the physics engine in the game that's it is what it is yeah yeah, I mean, I've made definitely a few videos on, on that. Got a lot of pushback. And that's one of the arguments, too. They're just like, they put it in their last tra trailer. I'm like, so what about the other 15 seasons, bro? <laughs> they, they, they tried removing it, like, yeah. season 12. Like, so. my example is just like, so the devs aren't huddled around in a circle watching your gameplay being like, oh, guys, they found it. They found it. Look at that. They got it. No, dude, it's a fucking glitch, dude. <laughs> they're not They're not cheering in a circle, clapping like, yes, this is it right here. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> they're like, they, shit, how do we fix this? <laughs> and they tried, and they just can't. So they just said, Fuck it. Leave it just, in there. Who put cares? It in, just put it in season 17, you know, whatever. <laughs> put it in the trailer. We're we're five we're five we're five years deep in this. Might as well just continue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just screw it at this point. <laughs> oh man. Um, I, but I mean it it's at the same time though, like 
that's those are some of the things that make games really fun. Like just those unintended little things that the yeah. devs don't know about, but the players find out. And it just it makes the <clears throat> game feel fresh again. Like yeah. it just makes it feel fun. So I'm all for it. Yeah. It's it, it's it. it's like when you used to get the the uh, discs, you know, the uh, the old game discs, the old D, the old D, DVD discs uh, games and then you'd find a glitch on there and you're like, "Wow, I have this forever now because they're not going to fix that." <laughs> speaking of speaking of tap strafe by the way. So I told you that I'm very middle of the ground like I think with reason. I'm not like some kind of anarchist uh, POS. Yeah. So I made a video a long time ago about, you know, um, the, them possibly uh, changing around aim assist or like looking at it. Or yeah, I, I think I, I saw that one game. today. <laughs> and um, there was uh, someone said in my comments like, oh, but you're all for removing tap strafing. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I did a video like two weeks ago saying that tap strafing should be left in the game. Like, what are you what are you talking about? He's like, I remember seeing your video and you made this long rant about how tap strafing should be removed. And I'm just like, bro, dude, it, it was it's an unintended consequence of the game. People found it out. I don't think it's game breaking at all. So like leave it in. Mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, but but people automatically assume because because I'm the aim assist uh, controller console dude. I've I've never played a PC before in my life. Have I told you? I've never I've never ever touched a mouse and keyboard. I've never played a shooter ever in my whole entire life on a mouse and keyboard. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Zero. <laughs> but that that but that's a goddamn lie because I know exactly <laughs> how all that shit works. <laughs> Oh, people, man. people just people just automatically assume that I'm yep. just like, like I'm just stupid or I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, yep. I, I hate to break it to a lot of you, but I have a lot of life experience in a lot of different avenues of gaming, casual or otherwise, controller or mouse and keyboard wise. So, yep. sorry to break your hearts there, sweetheart. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. No, you know what the funny thing is. I was going to do a video of me training myself on mouse and keyboard and I just never did it because I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> I did actually, that's a kind of a lie. I, I, I didn't do a video on it, but I definitely played Gears of War on it uh, with mouse and keyboard. And I'll tell you something. Anyone, you may disagree. Let's, let's see if you do. Anyone that says, <clears throat> especially people that start off on mouse and keyboard, keyboard's hard. Mouse is easy. Mouse is extremely easy. <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> so uh, easy. The, <laughs> the the only thing that gets quote unquote hard about mouse is tracking, but you spend like a solid two weeks to a month, like aim labs, aim trainer, or firing range in a game, you can get that shit down pat to like yeah. the to the average to above average player. The the very difficult part when it comes to to mouse and keyboard is literally the keyboard. Yeah. Um. And, and me personally, I think that's simply because people are placing their fingers wrong. But that's just me. That's probably uh, me. Yeah. Most likely. <laughs> uh. So most people place it A W S D. Uh. You should try E S D F. Think. I think that's the right. It's just one set over. So it's yeah. one. It's one yeah. set over. So the pro the problem. Can you see it if I do that? No, you can't. <laughs> no, I'm just looking at your junk now, but that's okay too. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the problem with uh, AWSD is it's all the way on one side of the keyboard, and your fingers are crowded, and your pinky has nowhere to go. You lose functionality with one finger. Whereas, however, if you just move it over you regain the functionality with your other finger and it also becomes a lot more comfortable. Mm. So, I can see that. That makes sense. I mean, that's just me personally, but what, like whatever people want to try, if they want to like 
turn their keyboard at a 45 degree angle while having two cameras, one at their face and one at their, you know, hand, AWS, like whatever, go for it. Do whatever you got to do, buddy. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying like, if you're, if you are a first timer on mouse and keyboard, I, I highly, highly recommend changing your binds to that instead. And you will have better functionality with your fingers that, because you won't be losing one. And it it will just be more natural feeling instead of feeling so cramped on one side of the keyboard. Hmm. Helpful advice. That's good. That's good advice. That's going to be a short, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I definitely, uh, I definitely was, I was even tracking pretty well. I mean, it was also just Gears of War Horde. So people weren't like jumping around and doing crazy shit, but I definitely sure. found myself tracking a lot better on mouse when i was playing that versus if i was using my, well I, i've been playing gears for a very long time so that's not true but I, I i found it to be a lot more intuitive when i was using the the, the, the mouse even versus the 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 aim assist on on the controller especially for tracking en enemies uh in, in that setting but uh yeah you're definitely right though with the training for a month you'll probably you'll probably be able to hit that goal easily i you know what i always find funny too like everyone always brings up like uh, Imperial Hal, like, dude, Imperial Hal just proved that controller's broken. Uh, dude, what a like, what about all the other roller players that switched to mouse and keyboard, and they they literally got masters or pred, yeah, in a season. Like, Nice Wig did a whole series where he <laughs> stopped playing on on controller, switched to mouse and keyboard. And got like I think he just got I think he stopped at Masters, but he's but he got Masters on mouse and keyboard. And yeah. He he wasn't really a mouse and keyboard player, like he wasn't before. He was mostly like all controller. Yeah, like people just think it's just this big giant amazing art form like mouse and keyboard. Like, dude, <laughs> at at the end of the day, you're playing on office equipment. Like, yeah, chill out. Yeah, like. <laughs> it's nice office equipment. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean to hurt it's anyone's feelings. Lights. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 very nice for sending your boss an email or uh, responding to hate messages. I I will give you that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's what it is. Like it, it's extremely precise and accurate. And the hard part comes in with the tracking and the movement on the keys. That that's the hard part. But the aiming and the control, dude, that is so easy. You fry people. If you play a much slower paced game, dude, you you'll be blasting people. Like if you've never played before and you just give it like a few like a few weeks to a month, you'll be frying people all day long. Mm. The the argument, one of the arguments that I actually made with that. Now, now that you mention it was um, and you might not agree with this but here, here we go so um, I'll try to make it as short as I can <laughs> so making the aim assist vi video you know mouse and keyboard versus controller um, a lot of people used to comment well why are the top players in Call of Duty or whatever on a controller my argument for that was okay so you're telling me the guy or girl what whatever that plays eight plus hours a day trains for probably four hours out of that day maybe two or whatever and they they play apex or they play call of duty competitively you're telling me that that person or that the aim assist is overpowered in that in that scenario and normally i wouldn't get a comment back so let, let me actually hear your thoughts on, on that one, <laughs> if you understood what you, I said. Can you just break it down just slightly, just short, give me like the short synopsis yeah, of what so, the argument is? So, so essentially, people make the argument that all the controller players are like, let's say, top five in the world in Call of Duty or Apex. And my argument is, these people play a, a lot, they train a lot on controller, and you're telling me that the aim assist is, is, is the thing that's overpowered. I mean, that's not... That that has part to do with it because training uh, and playing all the time will you will get better, but that's I mean that's not the overarching reason why. Um, uh, I did I had a long discussion with a pro player named MG Clutch in Apex, and he was a signed pro player for E6, 
and he's from Europe, but he plays over in NA servers. And he was telling me, he was like, dude, I hate to break it to you, but everywhere else in the world, controller is really not that big of a thing. It's mostly mouse and keyboard. <laughs> it's, it's really over here in NA where controller is a big thing. And I was like, well, Clutch, why did you say that? And he's like, well, I mean, you just have to look at your history in gaming. We, we grew up on, you know, the RTS and the Counter-Strikes, and you guys didn't really get into gaming until console era. Console era. You, guys were buy- you guys were buying them left and right. You not only had your Xbox, you also had the PlayStation. I mean, the Xbox was American-made. We didn't really have those over here in Europe. We either had, we either had the PlayStation, which had kind of okay graphics at the time, or we had our really we had to get a PC. And we got a mm. PC and we played on PC. So he's like, it has a lot to do with NA's history in gaming. We're very, very, very controller heavy in enriched history. It it's not necessarily because the, the aim assist is broken. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, like I guarantee you, if you were to go up to at ten different mouse and keyboard players, I would bet you one thousand dollars. Eight out of ten of them would say they first played on a controller. Hundred percent. Yeah. So, like, you're acting like they're doing this big, amazing thing playing on a controller that they already have played on. <laughs> I got play of the game in Overwatch, and I haven't played Overwatch. I haven't played mouse and keyboard in over 15 years. And I go over to my buddy house, my buddy's house, and I play, and I get play of the game, and I'm at the top of the leaderboard. Does that mean mouse and keyboard is broken? Should we nerf that too? Get out of here, you quacks! You guys are weirdos. <laughs> only make it so that your sensitivity can go to like two (laughs) that's the nerf so people people are just sitting there like with their mouth with their mice trying to like aim around do a 360 people are so weird dude like they don't understand like simple physics like it's it's a it's a physics it's a physical thing When, when you when you move your joystick over you're moving this way you have to cross over to start from start over here, and now you're looking. And to go this way, you got to cross the other way. The reason that the aim assist or the slowdown ex- exists is it's supposed to be what catches up. It's it's that difference between crossing that middle point. That's what it's there for. It's meant to make it a smooth experience. Not it's not meant to be cheating. It's not meant to make it broken. It's to remove that that time, that physical time away from that reaction that you have from moving. Otherwise, controllers would feel clunky as shit in most shooters <laughs> games. I'm being I'm being dead honest. Like yeah, yeah. Your your timing would be so off. Like so off. But your timing is on time because of it and it makes it a smoother experience. And like I said, like aim assist has existed in games since like Duke Nukem, bro. Like yeah. late nineties. <clears throat> like late, late nineties. Because developers realized while they were developing these games on PC, oh hey, I'm on a mouse and I'm on a keyboard while developing this game, and I'm developing this game and moving this character around like this, and it feels like this while I'm moving my hand. I, I visually see it moving like that with my mouse in my hand. But when I port it over to my workstation for my uh, developer build for my console, and I'm moving the joystick, something just doesn't quite feel right when I'm playing on it. And hence, Aim Assist was born. It wasn't born to give you a competitive edge. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of people abuse it in, in some aspect or yeah. some way that is beyond my understanding. But it, it's, it was never intentional to to make you to make you angry keyboard warriors foaming at the mouth. I I promise you, I swear with every being in my soul, that's what it was. It, it was never intended that way. It was never intended that way. <laughs> yeah, and I also feel like in the longest time I've been using a- aim assist, I feel like it 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 screws me more than it helps me some a lot of the times, <laughs> yeah, it, especially it, in Call of Duty. <laughs> 
a Call of Duty Apex. Yeah. Um, and, and that's because um, the more advanced games get, like, graphically, um, mechanically, the harder and harder it will be for a game developer to develop a proper aim assist algorithm. It, it just will be. It, it will just be harder. It, mm -hmm. Because they have to look and consider so many different variables when developing that specific algorithm. And, and they have to make decisions as to how strong or how weak they want to make certain aspects of it. Because, you know, um, take like Apex, for example. If they put slowdown in it, well, how strong should we make it? Uh, you know, we just, we, just, we just have kids just, you know, jumping off of boxes. It's just like this. Uh, but then they realize, like, oh, shit, this guy, five seasons later, is, like, gliding through the air like he's Neo. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, maybe we should have made that a little bit stronger. No, I'm just kidding. But that's what, that's the type of thing that I mean. Like, developers have to make that decision when they're developing the game. So Yeah. You seem like you also have a deeper understanding of uh, just game development in general. Uh, dude, I, I've, I've studied the shit out of what it takes. And every time I see some brain-dead idiot saying, uh, just remove the rotational. If you just remove the rotational, it would be balanced. Okay, so then what about the console kids that, you know, don't have, like, over 120 frames? Like, they have they drop frames constantly and in fights, uh, have worse input delay than controller on PC does. So you are saying remove the this uh, rotational you do understand that it's going to affect them as well, right? Oh, no, no, well, no, well, I'm just talking about PC. No, no, no. I'm telling you, it will affect them because the aim assist program is literally a strength value between the two platforms. You have 0.4 and you have 0.6, but it's the same program. And the reason that I know that is because R6 exists and some dude in R6 cranked it up to 100 and he showed what the aim assist program looks like at 100. So whether it's R6, console, or PC, they're all using the same aim assist program. It's just different strength values. Yeah. But no, no, that's not true, bro. You're lying. You're lying. It won't affect console. You don't know I don't give a shit about, about. <laughs> You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Calm down, dude. All right. I'm just telling you. Did you say Daniel? What did you say? Yeah. Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. That's funny. Oh, God. All right. Next question. <laughs> um, do you think uh, the new Modern Warfare 3 is, is promising at, at all? Uh, yeah, absolutely. 100% promising. Uh, look, I get, I get everyone's comments about DLC and yeah. all that BS, okay? But they're looking at it, they're looking at it the, lens, the lens through Warzone. Okay, Warzone is just going to get like some movement update and gun balancing. That's it. So then all of these trolls are all hopping up on Twitter. It's just a DLC, bro. Why are you paying for such? A, why are you paying for a DLC? Like, dude, do you know how much shit they're putting into this game? They're putting in a zombies DMC, uh, DMZ. They're putting in a bunch of different weapons with different matrix matrix um, play mechanics. They're putting, they're putting in, they're removing a lot of the stuff that they made mistakes on, that they're adding back into the game, or they're changing or fixing or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, new operators, new textures for old, dude. That takes a long ass time to do, and the only reason they're doing that is because they wanna, they want you to feel that nostalgia again that you felt when you were a kid. You know how special that is when a developer says, "We really want to take you back." Let us give you these old maps. But we're going to make them feel fresh and we're going to update them again. That, dude, that's fucking special as shit. How, like, you know how pissed off I got every single fucking time, like, Apex would drop in, like, oh, it's King Canyon after dark. 
Okay, well, that's great, motherfucker, but I don't want it dark. I want it bright so I can see when I'm shooting the guy, okay? I really love the old POIs. I really do. But I just want it a little bit brighter, okay? Just a little bit brighter. <laughs> here's the haunting of uh, here's the haunting of one of the old maps. You're like, why is it dark? <laughs> and why are there zombies? <laughs> it's so annoying. I hate Halloween events so much in first-person shooters. They're, Halloween events in most games are absolutely phenomenal, but in first-person shooters, they <laughs> suck ass because no one can ever get creative beyond, oh, just make it dark, bro. Come on! And a couple of jump scares. Don't forget that. Uh, I <laughs> Don't mean, forget about the jump, the jump scares. <laughs> the jump scares and the little red candles with their li the little flame is cool and all, but I mean, you can be a, you can be a little bit you can be a little bit more creative here. I know you got it in you. Uh, that's so. That's very true, though. Yeah, definitely. There's. Yeah, it's usually just darker. You got some jump scares, <clears throat> maybe some skins. <laughs> so it's so annoying. It's so bad. I, I did, hate it so much. I did enjoy the uh, zombie event though in um, Modern Warfare, or sorry, in Warzone, the first one, the one where you could like jump. Or, that was fun. I'll admit, being a, being a zombie was the best part. <laughs> I, I I played the zombie event <clears throat> in the haunting just recently in Warzone 2.0. Mm. I I could not stop laughing because it was this it was this jailbreak mode basically, and it was resur like resurgence and zombies like all rolled into one, and all these people were breaking free at once, and you just see these dudes in this open circle on Al uh, Al Mazra or whatever. And they're all chasing the dudes in the trucks that are running around. You just see, like, everyone follow the whole group of zombies running at them. And it's not like normal zombies, right? Because that would make it all spooky and scary. It's just like a bunch of, like, young kids and adults just laughing their ass off while yeah. they're chasing yeah. this truck. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. I almost had a heart attack. It was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, the zombies events were always fun. But then they did, like, the ghost event the second time in Warzone, I think it was the first one. And I was just like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just bring back this, just keep the zombies year, year round. It was, it was so much fun with like friends. That was like one of the very few battle Royales that I actually won a bunch in that and armored Royale. But it's like, it's funny. He's like, they always, they always like, they always have a banger. And then they just like go off the script. And you're like, why would you just keep the thing that's fun. Like this, this had like you know hundreds of thousands of players, and it's just like you just, you just gotta, you just gotta turn the knob just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> you don't, you don't need to full swing it, bro. Yeah. I'm telling Tweak you, tweak it. Like you know, keep the zombies, just make them jump, add like a juggernaut suit. You know, like add, yeah. add, add a juggernaut zombie, add a little mini boss. You know, something. Yeah. <laughs> but they're like yeah. ghosts that like fly, and you're like, what? <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> who is who? Where's the guy? Where is he? <laughs> Who's asking for this? <laughs> oh God! But um, to answer your original question, uh, yes, I, I do think I do think Modern Warfare Three is worth it, and I think a lot of people that call it a DLC is just looking at it through the lens of Warzone. You're not you're not looking at all of what Call of Duty is, or what it offers, or how much work that they put into it. Yeah, okay, the campaign's like three four hours, but like, what else are you getting in the game? You know, the zombies DMZ, you're getting a bunch of new operators, updated textures from old maps, new no, new skins. You're getting uh, updates to the actual gameplay itself, which is which is what you wanted. Yeah. It felt it felt great. I played the beta. It was amazing. And uh, like I haven't had that much fun in a Call of Duty like game period. Like not since. Oh, God, I don't even know when. Probably probably Modern Warfare to the original yeah so. do you think that um the last three call of duties being Modern Warfare 2019 Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 might have something to do with it too because they're just kind of just recycling old bangers and trying to relive the glory days I mean you could recycle old bangers but they'd <clears> still be <throat> shit that doesn't mean they're gonna be good <laughs> <laughs> I mean I play I played a little bit of Modern Warfare 2 and I thought that shit was ass uh, I played, I played a little bit of Modern Warfare, and I thought, okay, I mean, this is cool, but you know, I'm still into Apex at this time, so <clears throat> yeah. you know, whatever. So that's cool. That's cool. I'm glad you guys have that, but I'm going to be staying over here at Apex. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like you, you could, 
you could slap your name on it, a different name on it, as much as you want. Doesn't make it any any less shit of a yeah. game. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of the fans that kind of saw that, and I was just like, guarantee you, next is going to be Black Ops. <laughs> the next one's going to be is going to be Black Ops. <laughs> I don't know what they're. I don't know what the, did they just like run out of like content like. That's what I was thinking. Also, why I kind of stopped playing it. But um, the the other thing too is when you mentioned the new zombies, I think that's another thing too that nobody really asked for. They're innovating, but it's a little bit of a kind of left field innovation where it's just like, yeah, listen, we're not doing any round based zombies. We're just doing a DMZ with zombies, and it's just like, yeah, but like. Where where's the guy? Where is he? You know, like <laughs> we got him by get him by by the throat. Like where is he? Where's the dude that's asking for all this stuff? <laughs> I, I I was really heavy into Kino Deer Toten back in Black Ops. Uh, it was one, two, one. I think uh, one. It's been two. there's so many zombies and there's so many remakes. I think it's one. <laughs> anyway, besides yeah. the point, I was really into Call of Duty Zombies, and I was uh, there when. Tom Syndicate first came up and he was super big into Call of Duty Zombies and I watched all his videos. I totally understand it. It, it, it. People need to understand. It was a very small niche group that wanted to always get the highest kill rounds. Majority of people just wanted to get their favorite loadout or gun and just survive for like another 15 or 20 rounds blasting people away. It, it, either it was with the ray gun or they wanted to level up their one gun and they just needed like 15 more rounds and you know they can just level it up just a little bit more. Or you know people really enjoyed the easter egg so people were always looking for easter eggs in the game or like activating the song or uh, hey man I really need to do this easter egg can you please do it with me? Alright bro like I already did it here let's do it like this this is what you do. It, it was such a it was such like a, a small part of zombies just to see how high you could always get uh to the rounds because let's 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 be real let's be really honest here who the fuck has like 15 plus hours to spend so that they can get past level 100 every fucking day yeah you may be able to do it for like a day maybe like take some time off in the summer you know but you yeah. are not doing you are lying to yourself if you were doing it every day I, you are lying. You are not telling the truth. So I think I, I will miss round-based zombies. I'm not going to completely say that I won't miss it because I most certainly will miss it. But I just, I'm just super, I'm super pumped for the fact that a Call of Duty Zombies is in a more open world in a DMZ. I'm super excited about that. I want to see how that plays out. And then I, I'm I'm really curious. I saw a little bit of the gameplay, but I'm sure as time goes on, it, more things are going to develop. And you know, if they add Easter eggs in the map, maybe they added thirty. I mean, past Call of Duty maps, they only added like what two or three. Maybe they added thirty. Who knows? It might be. It might just be exciting again, like fun again. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Um, as far as level 100 goes, I've done it a couple times. Black Ops 3 was my fastest 100 round, probably like five and a half hours. You're not doing it every day, though. Not doing you're it not every do day, no. You're not at the whole way. Um, so, yeah. My first few times, first few attempts, I got it in um, eight hours. But then I got it all the way down to five and a half hours. Solo. That's good. With four That's people, it took like, dude, it took a long time. It took like probably nine hours with four people, maybe longer. I I know, man. I made the zombies Taco are Bell. quadrupled. That's why. <laughs> I, I made Taco Bell runs at hour six, running over there, getting my burrito. So, okay, guys, let's, let's take a quick breather here. Let's take a quick break. Save, you know save what I mean? less zombies. <laughs> Yeah, save the last zombie, save the crawler, and just yeah. like walk around him with for like I just need him for like fifteen minutes. That's all I need. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yep. Um, but the other thing that I was gonna say too is I I I spoke on this in a couple different podcast episodes and even probably videos at this point. But um, 
definitely DMZ, and I feel like I feel like D. I, I'm ex- you made a good point. Yes, we, I'm excited to see where it goes, but um, I, I made a point about DMZ staying. I, th- I think they're actually getting rid of DMZ. I might be wrong about that, but I could have sworn I saw like nobody. There's nothing. There's no like thing about it. Like there's nothing about it. Um, they may be bringing it back a different game. Maybe it's a different season or whatever. Um, but I think DMZ could have been pushed so much further. Gar- granted, it's it's in beta, beta. Because if you look at it, I'm pretty sure it still says DMZ with like a little beta thing at, uh, at the bottom. But I think they should have added zombies. I think they should have added you know the strongholds that have like just like juggernauts, like crazy things. We're like kind of what they're doing in the new zombies now, where they have like you know the outskirts is like the easy, and you get as you get closer to the middle of the map things get harder um but i think that they should have done that in dmz at at a different places like if you've played um what is it called uh the other battle royale that black ops 4 had i think it was um blackout you know where they had specific pois that had the zombies that had monkey bombs like that's what they should have done in dmz they should have made specific pois with specific enemies like and made it so that it wasn't so pvp focused and made it more like PVE with like a sprinkle of PVP where you're sitting there and you could encounter a different team, but maybe you want to team up with that team instead of killing each other and and the bots. We're like, listen, guys, these bots are hard as shit. Let's team up. Let's kill these guys and we'll split the loot. You know, like that in the Call of Duty toxic community, that's very low likely. But, you know, you get the point there. Um, I think yeah. they could have done so much more with DMZ, but they didn't. And if they do, great. But I think DMZ at one point was going to pretty much save Call of Duty. Um, if they did those kinds of things with it. Is that a bold statement? Your 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 face went... <laughs> you were like, what? <laughs> I mean, I played DMZ because someone said it was easy to collect souls in it because I was grinding out the last candle for the Halloween event. I was bored out of my mind. I was like, what is this shit? Because I'm, I'm like, try, I'm running around trying to find enemies, and I'm like looting microchips, and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I want to, I want to shoot people. I do don't, you want to? Do you like PvP games more, or do you like P- PVE games more? Uh, definitely PvP games more. Yeah, that's that's why. <laughs> I'm, I love PVE games. It's my, that's like my jam. Like that's why I also like zombies so 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 much. Like you know the round based and whatever else, because it's just oh, I, I just enjoy it more. I, I enjoy a good zombies game, don't get me wrong. Or I enjoy like a good RPG, but I mean, dude, it, it's like, I'll give you a good example because I really grinded the shit out of uh, the original Fable series and the and um, Elder Scrolls Oblivion and Skyrim. Those were amazing games to grind out, and I loved every second of playing those games. But the moment that I played Starfield, I was like, dude, this shit's so boring, bro. I'm just going to uninstall it. Like, I'm sure it'll get more exciting down the road as people <clears throat> add, like, mods and different things to it. Yeah. Like they did like they did in Fallout, right? Yeah. But, like, dude, downloading Starfield for the first time, dude, I was like, dude, this is... I, I was so pumped to play this game, but this shit is so boring. I don't want <laughs> I just... I uninstalled it right away. So if it's the right game... If it's the right game and it has the right amount of excitement at the time, sure, I don't mind. I don't mind playing it. But yeah. my problem with but my problem with DMZ and Call of Duty is I was running around for like a solid ten minutes. I didn't see shit. I didn't see. <laughs> I didn't see an enemy. I didn't see a bot. I was collecting microchips from a dumpster, and I was like, dude, this is what the hell is this shit? Dude? That's interesting. Usually, there's bots everywhere. I like can't get away from the bots. <laughs> <laughs> that's what someone told me i was streaming at the time that's what someone told me in my chat the dude that told me to play dmz he was like dude this is so weird like i'm usually running into so many things dude and so, so many, many bots bro he's like but you're you're literally not running into shit and i'm like yeah it's boring what do you mean <laughs> dude that's actually really weird maybe because maybe you didn't spawn with any players like that, because I I th- I think the more other players there are on the area, the more bots spawn too. And then like, if you kill those bots, then the threat in the area goes up. So then more bots spawn and harder bots spawn too. So I think that might have been the reason why. Maybe, maybe what which map did you play on the big one, the biggest map, most likely the first map, Al Mazra, uh, is that what it's called? I think. Man? Uh, 
not Al Mazra. It was more like a dark, darker, cloudy kind of. Oh, it was a Halloween map. Got it. <laughs> uh, kind of like like grayish. Like it was just gray, like a slate gray. Like if you were to walk in, if you were to look at a picture of New York City, that an artist's interpretation of mm. a rainy day in New York City, and it was all slate gray and like cold looking. Hmm. Like that's what it looked like. Okay. I don't know what I don't know what map I just described. <laughs> Maybe someone in the Call of Duty community can yeah. tell me. Someone, that's someone what in the comments like. can tell us. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Um, yeah, no, that's strange. That's actually kind of funny though that you didn't hit it. Did you didn't? I I can't get away from the bots. I was playing with uh, always game time. Um, and me me and him were, were jamming out, and we like got we got killed by bots three times. <laughs> That's how many bots there were. There's just an army of bots. We couldn't kill. We couldn't kill all of them. So, that's, but that's hilarious. Um, this this is the last question. Are you are you ready for it? It's not it's not very dif- difficult. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Is, is Call of Duty coming back? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> uh, Call Call of Duty is coming back. Like Apex is coming back. Okay. <laughs> like, like once the initial hype wears out, and trust me, the hype has been real since 2008, okay? Yeah. So, uh, it's never going to be, like, how it was. Like, there's, ju- there's just no way. And, I mean, you're going to have, like, Modern Warfare 3 coming up where it's there's going to be a lot of hype. People are so excited to play, and they're going to play it for, like, a solid three, four months. And then once that hype wears down then it's just right back to the same old bitching and moaning but the players aren't going to go anywhere because the the game is a staple so it, it, it's not like it's dying or is it it's dead i tell the people the same thing about apex apex isn't going to go nowhere it yeah. has a solid it has a solid steady player base that is very dedicated to playing the game because they initially liked it so much uh respawn hasn't really done anything innovative since like season seven Maybe that's a stretch. Maybe I'm being too harsh. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm just, uh, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to say season seven. Who cares? They haven't really done anything innovative since like season seven. So like, you know, it is what it is, but it, that, that doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to die or anything. Yeah. But it's definitely, but it's not, it's definitely not making a comeback. That's for sure. What do you think the peak of Call of Duty was? Like what, like what game? What era? Uh, the, I, for me, it was the Black Ops era. Like, like that was just that was so that was so top tier. And I know everyone says like, oh, Modern Warfare two and you know Modern Warfare three or Modern Warfare one even, right? But for me, like I like to look at all aspects that a game has to offer, and I like to look at its replayability. So yeah. while while you know. Modern Warfare was really cool. Like I play, I put hours into that game too. Don't don't get me wrong, but the multiplayer in Black Ops, along coupled with zombies, there was just it was like it was really amazing. It was it was a good time. And what even yeah. made it better was that you had to look forward to the next Call of Duty because you were so pumped about that Call of Duty. And then and then they came out with World War II, and it was shit. Or they came out with Advanced Warfare. And that was shit. And you're like, no, no, this is just going to ass. Let's just go play something yeah. else. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play Peggle on my sister's Xbox account. <laughs> I did. I did enjoy the Advanced War, War, Warfare Zombies though. That that was that was fun. I, I I don't know if you got a chance to play that. I hated both of them. I hated the multiplayer <laughs> and I hated the zombies. I hated both of them equally. So I, I, mean, I just I, I just like the suit. Like the the 3D dimension of jumping was 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 fun for me in zombies. But then they had the exo zombies. They used to. Not they're not exo zombies like the EMP zombies. They used to take your suit out, and then you'd have to like then you'd be a human again running around. You'd be super slow and die. It was just really boring. But then it was really fun once you could like jump over a horde of zombies. It was really fun. But yeah, you didn't you didn't play it that much. <laughs> I I didn't like it like that. I, I like I, see. I, I'm I'm a farmer. Okay, I like to gr- I like to grow my crops before I slice off the heads of cabbage. All right, you get you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So I liked I liked corralling those motherfuckers and then taking an LMG and just blasting them in the head. Mm. The whole the whole like jump pack thing flying around. I mean that just that kind of yeah. ruined it. That kind of ruined that feeling for me. Yeah, I agree. 
yeah, I mean, uh, for the multiplayer, that's definitely what what ruined it. After Advanced Warfare, I think was like one of the times where I was like, yeah, I, this this is this game sucks. I'm not doing this any anymore. Like especially because the Speakeasy was like the almost overpowered gun f- pretty much the entire time that game was out. It was like a Thompson. It was it was it was it was a Thompson, and. Dude, I could never get that variant. I tried so hard, but I also never bought anything. So like, I was just always like pl- grinding to try to get it. Me and my friends, no, no, none of us really spent spent any money on, on the game. So we were just grinding, grinding, grinding. We could. I got like two variants that were that was like the same gun, but it wasn't the Speakeasy. There's something about the Speakeasy that was broken. I don't remember what the hell it was. I, I'm pretty sure it was like a recoil or something. Like the recoil on it was like almost zero, no matter what you were using, yeah. no matter what comp, no matter what platform you were on, it was like zero re- recoil. And it was like if you were good at movement in that game, you would just you would just rail teams like like just it was so easy. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like I can't like I I used to always the sniper in that game, the semi-auto sniper, which was like the M21 from from the other Call of Duties. Yeah. It was fun. I used to love using it, but like shooting this dude, you know, like it was impossible. I'm like, and I'm like, I'm just sitting here like, all right, well, I'm going to die in three. Yep. Dead. <laughs> the game came out before it was ready. It was before it's time. Yeah. I mean, not, nowadays, nowadays, everyone loves cracked movement gameplay. Yeah, that's uh, true. But it, it, it's just, um, you know, we got, we were eased into it. That's why this current era of gameplay in first-person shooters has come about. The movement shooters, as I like to call them. That's why they exist nowadays, because they we got eased into it as time went on. Whereas Advanced Warfare, we went from uh, laying on our stomachs and dolphin diving to to fucking gliding across the map. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Being able to jump forward... And then and then glide backwards for like you know ten ten feet or whatever. That, yeah. that was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, to to answer your original question, as far as Call of Duty is concerned, no. Uh, and to to add on to that, the next big thing is not going to come from a big studio. I'm one hundred percent almost positive. The next game that comes out that people are just going to grind the shit out of, and it's going to last decades, is going to come from. An indie studio. Well, I Fortnite was like that. For, Fortnite wasn't a- Epic. Wasn't that big? Was was it? Or no, uh, that was an uh, Epic. Was that is, is uh, that the actual developer? Yeah, but uh, yeah, but Epic's huge. I mean, they they developed the Unreal Engine, yeah. and they also they developed um, uh, Unreal Tournament, which was the predecessor, mm. which was the predecessor to like Fortnite, and they also developed the Gears of War series. So, yes. well, is that a Microsoft they project? They I, it was made. It was made in. Un, it was made in Unreal Engine, but isn't that a Microsoft project? The Gears of War. It. it the, they bought the rights to it, but oh, Epic made okay. it. Got it. Epic. Epic made it for Microsoft. Mm. Okay, that, that it, makes it, more sense. It's like a. It's like if you were to commission an artist for a piece of work. Yeah. And you pay for it. Same same concept, you know. That Microsoft paid Epic and said, "Make a game for us." Epic said, "Here you go." So, uh, and that's a pretty big franchise too, especially the story. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, so they were they were huge. Yeah, they were huge True. when they made Fortnite. I, I'll, all I'm saying is, is like it's the only thing that I have to back up my statement is that it was done once before. Uh, two two guys from. Uh, and a game studio left their company and they decided that they were going to focus on one game and one game only and it became one of the largest games in the world and one of the most sought after esports in the world and I'm talking about League of Legends so two guys started a dream they said we're going to only focus on one game in our studio and that's it we are just going to focus on this game and that's no more and it blew up to be massive Mm. So I, that's the only thing I have to back up my statement for what I said. So it's going to happen again. I can I can feel it in my bones. It's there's going to be another riot. You know those those two guys are going to come out of the woodwork. They're going to come out of their grandma's basement and they're going to make something amazing. It might even be some somebody from uh, from Activision or two guys from Activision. Who 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 knows? 
like who knows i'm just waiting for the day man i'm yeah. i'm waiting for the day cuz it's going to be it's going to be a amazing thing it's going to be a beautiful beautiful thing because i remember when league of legends first dropped and i was playing that in my dorm room in college i thought dude the game is so good dude <laughs> like what? wow i love it and just learning all the different character builds and items and stuff and you yeah. know and watching it, I still watch League of Legends videos, and I haven't played the game in like five years. You're just interested watch, in it. It's so interesting. Like you don't think it is? It's interesting. It's I. It's so, I, I don't play that stuff. I I don't really play Call of Duty anymore, but I still watch the videos on it, you know, and see what people have to say about it. So I get it. You you should try. Just try it. <laughs> watching a watching an uh, LCS, which is their championship series. Just try watching like an LCS finals. It's it's so exciting, dude. Because You'll have to send like, it to me in Discord next time it's on. Just just send me a link and I'll and, and, and I'll take a look at it. Because you know what makes it exciting though is because it's a, it's a setup period. You know these two teams they're right next to each other, but they don't mess with each other. And time goes on, and then just someone makes the first move, <laughs> and then you're, it's like, oh oh, he's going for it. Is it going to happen? <laughs> And then all of a sudden the team dog piles on each other and then you're just like, it's happening. It's <laughs> happening right now. It, it's just, it's really exciting. It's, 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 that, it's the buildup. Yeah, it's the buildup. That's yeah. what makes it, that's what makes it so intense to watch and so exciting as an, as, like as an eSport. That's what makes it good. Interesting. That's an interesting take. Um, well, that was my last question and I want to be respectful of your time again. So uh, where, can the, where, can, where can the people fi find you? You can literally find me anywhere. I'm like, uh, I'm like a magnet, a uh, maggot on a piece of fish. Uh, so you can find me on like Facebook, TikTok, uh, YouTube, Twitch. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or X. You can find me on Kick. You can find you can liter you literally can find me anywhere. Instagram. <laughs> I will. Uh, yeah. I will. I will be putting your your links down below, and I'll probably put them on screen too, or your handles, and then I'll uh, put your link tree down down there too. So they'll be able to like, find you easier like, like there's no one that's named peak panda trust me that like no that's one. no one that like <laughs> so very easy to find very if you easy to find, find me <laughs> oh panda i appreciate it man this this has been fun yeah i'm glad i had a blast